To be fair, I will use the best plot device that the show has given us so far is that he probably followed that in the, uh, the book. book of wisdom that he received from uh, Echidna. So that probably told him like, he's, hey, go he's you right. know, fuck up this he village, get help. these girls. He just can't help but simp for his girl, man. <laughs> exactly. That's that's the biggest thing we've learned about Roswell. Roswell is the number one simp. 400 you got years. The, that only fans, he's keeping that thing floating for, <laughs> for forever and ever years. and ever. So. Welcome to the Anime Izuka Podcast, week 10 of the winter 2020 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season of anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Shren. Hi. Next up, we have Ku. Yo, yo. Next up, we have Justin. Hey, everyone. And finally, we have Taylor. Hello. All right. Um, just quick, some quick anime news before we go into this week's show. Uh, we have um Steven Slayer movie, Mugen Train announcement for North America coming on Tuesday. So I look forward to that. And then um, real quick too, on uh, today's episode of uh, AOT, uh, there's broadcast delay due to the earthquake. So we won't talk about it uh, this week. We'll just wait till whenever it airs on the streaming sites. So I uh, look forward to that. And I guess that'll be, yeah, that'll be it for Amy News. We're going to jump right into our first show. Talk about Higurashi. Another the other week of of your girl's talk. Yeah, I love, love her. <sighs> You know, I'm kind of conflicted with this episode because they brought back the uncle. And, uh, I mean, to be fair, I didn't really see what he did to Satoko. So I'm not, like, that angry or that mad against the guy. But uh, how do you guys feel about that whole redemption of this character uh, during this episode? Because I'm kind of mixed about it. It doesn't count. It doesn't count because, like, he do- it's almost like something, like an external force is, like, making him change it's not his own will to do so he's acting upon those changes but mm-hmm. it's not enough to really make like i don't find him redeemable i was like a little confused because i thought this whole i thought this, they're saying um oh like i thought they were setting up so that's Satoko like in the previous loop like that she was saying she lied or something about being abused because that she it's like part of her plan whatever so i thought that we're going in that direction but it doesn't sound like that that that's what's going on i don't know like it sounds... you know, there's that and there's two other things that came to my mind as well uh when they're kind of portraying the uncle in this light um because right before like the showcase of the uncle uh i think we're calling her what I- yao iwa now I- uh, I got us. I- yeah I- yeah I- something ridiculous so something, yeah <laughs> so eua yeah uh that's her name now uh, EUA was talking about how with the loopers and like whoever's closest to them or have the like the closest bonds, I guess. Uh, they're also um, they're they're kind of like involved with the with the loopers as well as like they're like the different memories from the different universes are starting to slowly merge with them, depending on what the current uh, like world the looper is in. You know, like and it's um... just talking about miracles as well. So uh, I would want to say that this is an example of the miracle that she's talking about. Where since he's getting all these different memories, it's changed who he is, and then he's doing something that he normally wouldn't do. Hence the miracle, and uh, also with that as well, we kind of see that you know maybe he's not as bad as we thought. And since the Toko is kind of a bitch, if you don't really like the Toko, maybe the uncle wasn't as bad as you thought he was. I mean, that's that's just my take on it. Um, I don't know. I I just wish they. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe they'll tell us next week. But like, I wish they clarified. How like uh, yeah whether or not like her arc was as a result of her looping and like if she, or if she really actually did like if she really did feel afraid of her uncle because of all the abuse or it's like it that's something else going on so like I, don't I think know. she I really just, did feel afraid because when she when he talked to her she like was genuinely scared she had yeah, nobody to, to that, have to act for like, and the abuse has been consistent through all the past seasons so i i definitely think it's yeah, i think that, it's real that's for what sure. i'm leaning towards too but like it was just confusing because they they had that part in the beginning where she was where she was asking about like how about like how other people could uh still have retained the memories and then like and but it does seem genuine how afraid she was so yeah I was just, uh, as I mentioned to Ku, like, like when you're saying how you so want, you want Keiichi to be involved in this somehow, like, 
like when he got, got that flashback of like his other time i just thought of that comment like oh this is this is his chance to actually be involved in the story <laughs> maybe, maybe he's a looper as well you know well, um no, I, I think it's just because like it's like it's all the friends like the club members just being affected by satoko and rika being looping so they could finally yeah. like, be part of the resolution this is how they got to tie that in yeah, and then if you think about it, like with how uh, EUA kind of mentioned it, uh, with Rika as the original looper, and then like with Satoko strong feelings for her, that's how she got pulled into that rem as well. And then now that Satoko and Rika is is a looper, uh, it looks like um, like the involvement of these like close members are are getting a lot stronger. So yeah, it's uh, Keiichi starting to have like these crazy like traumatic memories of these different universes and then you got the uncle who's who's not really close but he is a blood member of satoko so maybe that's why he was able to like experience these uh hallucinations as well or these different memories so i feel like with two loopers now like constantly in the same universe it's going to cause a lot more uh like hallucinations for all the close members so we got Mion, shion rena uh maybe they'll start having these like uh, hallucinations as well so uh yeah i don't know it's weird i just feel like this episode just like man like they need to pick up the pace i just feel like a lot of things in this episode like really didn't need to be there i really want to go back to that that first part with uh sotoko and rika like like right before they they, um they came back to like the sotoko like focus so i don't know like Mm. i just like personally i think the pacing is okay i'm just worried about the fact that they don't have many episodes left because they're only uh, set to have 24 episodes this season. So I'm not sure how they're planning to end the, I just, the season. I, don't know, I just, I just, I just don't see the point in this episode. I wasn't, I'm not sure what they were trying to do with the uncle, like what the messaging they're supposed to be like, or why they had to take that long to show that other people um, are affected by the loops when we, we saw Keiichi as far away. I felt like that was enough. I don't know. I just, I just didn't feel. Um, I just think we don't. I'm sure it has a purpose. It, like it definitely feels like they're setting up to explain what that is next episode. We just don't know what it Maybe is. Maybe just yet. me being impatient, like I always am. Then I don't know. No, I actually, I actually like the pacing of this episode. Again, I just don't know how they plan to wrap it up. That's what mm-hmm. I'm concerned about. Uh, because mm-hmm. other than the fact as to the uncle showing up, like we don't know why he was chosen. Other than the fact that I think it's because they want to show that miracles can happen, right? And then that's the miracle in a sense for Satoko. I, I suppose. I don't know who else. I don't know who else would benefit from him becoming a nice guy now. So That's fair, I think. Right. So I'm I'm not sure. And then to be honest, I think it was probably the best situation to prove that miracles do happen because Satoko is the one that's kind of new to this looping uh part, like power. So um but yeah, I don't know. Uh I think next episode for sure will hopefully come to the conclusion of this arc because you know, I kind of feel the same way as you do, David. I don't know what the point of like showcase the uncle was. I guess that so. it's just it's just like I just feel like there's so much time spent on Satoko in this period. It's like, what is the point of this? Mm-hmm. Like, it seems like we could have shrunk this down a little bit, and like I want to go back to like Rika and like had had I don't know, just like resolve that. Like, it's just I think I feel like this is gonna ultimately be more. Well, I mean, I think Rika will come into play, but I think this is ultimately just like more about Satoko. Because, like, there's just so much with the history of Rika from previous seasons. Mm -hmm. There's just not really that much to explore there that hasn't already been explored. But all of this stuff with Satoko is, like, totally new. So... I guess I should have said that. I guess... um, I guess maybe not. I I should should have said, like, uh, the whole... Everything they've shown about Satoko has not been good. So I guess, like... Like, well, yeah. I, I wouldn't say it's not good, not but good it doesn't put her in a good light, not, you know? Not for characters, <laughs> I mean, like, like, it doesn't show in a good light, so, like, yeah. Because I've never wanted guys. to stab a person as much as Satoko, all right? <laughs> wow. Like, like, when I thought Gabby was bad, and then, like, Higurashi was like, yo, hold my beer, I got you. And then they just brought <laughs> Satoko out, and then yeah. I just want to, <laughs> just, ooh, get him. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's I, I still enjoy it, but see, for me, I feel like my interest has kind of evaporated. Like I don't really know what this is really going to bring, but I don't think it's going to be anything that I find particularly interesting compared mm-hmm. to like what's been done before. Like this is basically just like a exactly almost like a side story. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. 
Makes me so sad, you guys. I was so pumped for this to be a remake or something. Ugh. Yeah, oh, well. I, I mean, I would want to ask, like, what were you expecting from this season? Uh, but I guess I'll wait until the end, once everything's aired, and then we'll go from there. Um, yeah. Because we really don't know what the point of this season was. Yeah, yeah. You and me both. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. I guess that, so, yeah. that'd be it for Higurashi. You don't have much to go off of, so... Is that it for Higurashi? Miracles. Yes, Miracles. miracles. Uh, move on to... Uh, move on. This is for you, Ulysses. Move on to Hori Mia. You guys get started. I'll be right back. I can listen. Okay. Sounds good. Well, right. I guess first thing first, all my Yuki fans stand up because, you know, you got you got a lot of love this episode in terms of <laughs> Yuki and, and her development. Um, but I guess before we start into that, um, I know, you know, we opened up the episode with uh, Mia, Hori and Tanihara, Tanihara. the like feel colored that... boys. Uh, they're having their like kind of awkward like, oh, hey, he's like, oh, sup. And then, of course, you know, Mia or um, Hori. Just reading way too much into it and thinking now that uh, Mia and Tanihara are, you know, feeling some things for one another besides just, just a, just uh, a bromance. Have, just having, <laughs> trying to have a bromance and just, just right? ruining all of it. Like, you can't. It's not allowed anymore. It's just not allowed. Apparently not. not. Yep. We live which in a is, society. Which is rude because it's coming from <laughs> horror, you know? Like, I'm not one to kink shame someone, but, you know, girl, you got your, you got your like, kinks. You know, my boy Mia's got his kinks, you know? Let, let the man have his romance, you know? Like, let him have his moments. Man, it's so rude. I hear that. And then, of course, Hori having to, you know, take it a step further of, like, oh, Mia, like, I'm, I'm okay if, you, you know, you, you want to see other girls, but other guys, like, don't do me like that. Like, that's unacceptable. So, yeah. totally, you know. Uh, drive to Ku's point of Hori just being a little bit uh, unfair in this situation, given her kind of uh, selfishness, I guess we'll call it, with her kinks. <laughs> and that opening was super weird. I did not like that at all. That was like, no question, my <laughs> least favorite part of the show so far. Like, just so weird and random and like uncomfortable and just kind of like, I don't know. It, I just didn't like it. Yeah, it definitely feels like they're trying to sprinkle in moments with everybody you know even though we saw the majority of this episode was focused on more so like the side characters again mm -hmm. so i i think more and more and kind of to ulysses point you know with the, with the show coming to an end we're definitely starting to feel i think personally like that crunch of you know the just the the, the lesser number of episodes and yeah. trying to just I remember, do everything uh, almost i remember i used to say in the comments that like they, they were i think they they're they're jumping fast through the manga I don't know how many mm. chapters it is, but like, it seems like yeah, they're going fast. And this has been going on for ten years, and so I don't know how much they get through in like a twelve episode, or thirteen episode season. So, mm. right. yeah, I pretty, I pretty much was just considering this to be like a sampling board of the what the manga has to offer. So if you mm. like what's in the anime, read the manga. This definitely just feels like an advertisement for that, mm -hmm. um, which I'm, which I'm okay with. Like, I don't feel any crunch for how it's going to end or what's going to happen. Like, I've already one hundred percent on board to do that. So. The for me, it's is, fine. The only thing with me is just like I just I'm losing so much sense of time passage in this anime, like because like because you know yeah. in the Yuki section where they said, "Oh, it's cold out. It's about to snow soon." I'm like, was it was it summer? Was it just summer recently, or like was it just still warm? Like last like, episode. <laughs> like how did we yeah. jump to like being super cold? So like this time, this time skip. Like I, I don't know. Like I'm so I'm so confused about like the passage of time in this show. So yeah. That's mm. that's fair. I agree with you there. It's really hard to keep up with and definitely seems like it's jumping. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I guess that's what happens when we have 13 episodes to work out a 10 year uh, manga. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to pick what you think is, you know, I guess. the main selling points, like you said, Taylor, of getting people to, to go and read the original source material now. So, yeah, definitely and understand. Yeah, and that's what I was totally worried about too. Just because, like I said, in the middle of the season, they already like established their relationship. You know, like Corey and Mia, they've already hooked up, so that's like a solid relationship, <laughs> right? Um, so there's probably nothing that's going to break that apart unless you know someone gets in an accident. Uh, but yeah, now that we see that you know their uh, their ending to this season is is a little iffy. The challenge just rush things in there, and. Uh, I guess people are starting to not enjoy what they're putting out there. I'm kind of afraid as to like what they're going to do with the ending. Like, is it going to be anime uh, original or are they going to focus on like, uh, are they going to focus on maybe Toru and Yuki's relationship? Cause it looks like they're putting more focus on that now too as well. I'm not, I'm not really sure. 
Uh, I think that, yeah. I, think, I think that was the point of this week's episode is, is put a lot of folks on here so they not to like rush it at the end or something or or like I guess like maybe it makes more sense having all in one episode instead of scattering at like side things for the rest of it. Hmm. Yeah. Um. But that said, though, I I still enjoyed you know the episode of getting that that context for Yuki and kind of her continuing to overcome her ability of you know, really speaking her mind and, you know, being kind of straightforward with the things that she wants. Um, I enjoyed, you know, the interactions that we had with, um, I think it was when Yuki and her older sister were shopping in downtown and we kind of got to see, you know, like the polar opposite personalities of Yuki's older sister, which a bit cliche, of course, like they have to have that to show like the easiest, like opposites uh, in yeah. Yuki's sense. Um, but I think overall, I, I, I still enjoyed kind of that focus of things um and then we also got to see a little bit more of sakura and her finally kind of getting that conclusive answer from toru of like hey yeah like you know not interested even though as we learned later in the episode toru says that the only reason he said no to sakura is that he's not kind of worth a girl of her standards like she would be better with anyone else but him is that um, all that we were supposed to take from their conversation i thought there was some level of him understanding a little bit of what Yuki was going through. Yeah, well, I, I, I think that too. To yeah. Yeah. towards that now, right? That there is yeah. a possibility of them getting together now. Yeah, that's what I took from it. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe, but... maybe I just completely missed that. There's I like just saw a, lot, more so. a lot of wordplay during that roof scene with yeah. like Yuki and Sakura. <laughs> that's yeah, hard to cherry, like... the cherry blossoms and stuff in snow. <laughs> and I'm so. just like, all right, I, I see what you're trying to do. I, feel like... I get like, you know, the comparisons or the, the nicknames. I feel, like, <laughs> uh, I feel like Toru gave like the best Tori answer uh, when it came down to like why the snow left or why it melted. Um, <laughs> because it, it chose to is not because spring is here. That's why the snow melted. And then, uh, you know, yeah, Yuki saying, no, nah, Maran, it's because it's it's spring and it's warm. That's why I melted. Like, oh, my God. I understand where he was trying to, where he was coming from. And I'm pretty sure there was a lot of, like, metaphorical stuff he was throwing at Yuki. But, man, that that explanation just made my brain hurt a little bit. But yeah. I, I, I feel just, like coming from Toru, it's fine. You know, you know what? Yeah. Toru's a little bit burnt out. He's been, like, fixing everybody's problems, I feel like, this whole season. Like, he, he, helped, he helped give me... Uh, Mia like a little bit more self confidence. Like he got everything figured out with Hori and then supported them. Like he's been everywhere helping everyone. <laughs> true, true. His brain's uh, done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I don't know, man. Still, that's Toru, man. You got to go back to first grade. <laughs> so whatever, dude. <laughs> I just can't. I just couldn't. I forgot exactly what he said, but how he how he referenced it or how he was trying to like. Uh, like explain it to Yuki. I was like, "Nah, bro. Like this is this is why you and Yuki are gonna have problems because you want to explain something, but it doesn't make sense. Yuki's like afraid to tell you like what she really wants, so she's just gonna beat around the bush, and like you're just gonna constantly have this like misunderstanding. Yeah, you're just running in circles around I'll each other. Say there were yeah. there was an attempt. I just say <laughs> that's true. That, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, and then the other thing too with Sakura this episode, like my heart goes out to her. I was really yeah. hoping that would yeah, work out. Yeah, man. Too. I was like, can somebody give this poor girl a hug? Like she's you literally. Mean, like, a... yeah, you mean, I kind of like know. Goku. Just like, yeah, like Goku Goku girl. when she just breaks no. down and then he just looks the other way and he's just like, oh yes, you know, he goes all philosophical on her asses and it's just like, all right, like, cool, what, bro. Hey, what can a guy with like, girlfriend possibly do? <laughs> like, yeah, uh, I don't know. I felt I, so I, bad for her. <laughs> I kind of yeah, thought yeah. Sengoku was going to get, go for the hug. And then, like, yeah. as soon as he goes for the hug, like, uh, his girlfriend would have been just right around the corner. Just give him that glare, you know? But, uh, uh, yeah. Well, she... I think of anything, I just would want to see, like, that empathy from him and kind of being that, like, yeah. you know, order to yeah. lean on, regardless of, you know, like, male-female, like, attraction or anything of that nature. It's just like, yeah. yo, this is the person that, you know, is yeah. in your student body president. And you obviously care for them. And now you see, like, you know, they were putting on a facade of mm -hmm. happiness when you know you just drilled directly into what they were oh, really he, most like, upset he about he asked her straight up to like hey i heard i see you're feeling much more happier now despite her yeah, whole right? thing. it's like oh god that makes it even worse it's like that, that yeah that's the like, worst right like that combined with like not not doing anything when she was breaking down <laughs> this guy <laughs> yeah. man. I, no i totally feel for her because you know she definitely is that character that like many of the characters don't want to bring everybody else down so you know mm -hmm. they just want to have this 
perception of like, no, I'm good. And then when somebody, you know, either keeps drilling on that point or like <laughs> really hits the, the nerve on the, on the head or the yeah. nail on top of the head, then that's when it's just like it all comes to, you know, mm -hmm. the front and explodes as we saw. So, yeah, hearts out for Sakura. Hopefully things work out for her in some way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll say also, I, I give credit to um, Remy when um, she's talking to Yuki too. Like she's like, oh, I'll do it for you if you will admit if you'll tell me right here that you know, you, you love Toru, I, I actually I really like mm -hmm. that from her. Like so, yeah. I like I like how she, like she doesn't take BS from people like that. That's I, that's a trait mm -hmm. I like seeing characters. So, um, mm -hmm. really like very appreciate seeing that from Remy. Yeah, then, I really like that as well. And then like and usually like for characters like Yuki, the ones who like can't like say what they feel, like or have trouble like that. Usually I don't like those kind of characters, but I feel like the backstory they give like it's, um. I know I made her more. I I, I sympathize with her more this episode, like compared to usually when characters like yeah have, have trouble saying what what they're feeling. So I still sympathize with her. Yeah, they definitely they 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 showed it in a very empathetic way. Nobody, most people aren't really trying to be like out to hurt anybody when they act like her. So it kind of. It show. I mean, it just was understanding towards her character and why she would do that without like making her. I don't know, selfish, too selfish. Uh, well, I mean, it's not like they're being wrong. Like, I think everyone mm -hmm. has a right to be selfish in a sense. That's mm -hmm. why even Sanguka mentioned it too. You know, it's like, like, what can I say? What can you do? Like, no one's really in the wrong. Everyone's kind of like entitled to how they are. So, uh, you really can't blame anyone for what just happened. And that's just high school life in general. That's just how yeah. life is. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's rough, man. It is rough. Good thing I'm not a girl. Yikes! I can't imagine going through that shit. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, what else do you guys think about the, the episode? Is that it, or I, yeah, I, just like, like, I think that's it. it. It's just where do we go from here in the final? Um, you know, <laughs> I, I I guess like I'll say like, two I more mean, episodes. I was. I originally, you know, was all about like I just want you know the two main characters to shine, but like I, but like, this episode mm -hmm. made me appreciate the side characters more. So either I focus on the side characters, I appreciate this format to really like let them shine. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think if anything, we probably all want you know a second season or more of the animated front. But if not, then we'll be heading right to that source material yeah. to get the, I mean, it's, it's not really the answers we need. I, I need. It's not really a show where I need like just a lot of like. I don't. I need like a second season to continue the story or anything. I just. I just like watching the episodes. So mm -hmm. it's much more of an episodic thing, which I. I'm sure I get. I appreciate, even though I usually like having yeah. more. More story. Focus, I think for me but, now that I, I am invested in these side characters, like I want to see their closure as well. Mm -hmm. Like they've built that world enough to show even, me that okay, this is more than just Hori and Mia. We mm. had that. We still had that one. That one. Uh, Kohai that's in love. With that, oh my god oh, right like, yeah, i totally forgot about her just completely oh, disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know she, she she doesn't count she's not part like, she's not the same grade not part of the main <laughs> clique so you know we can just write her out but everybody else I, i'm invested now i need that <laughs> yeah, that was a really good point, i'm glad David. you brought that up because i totally wrote her out of my mind <laughs> yeah, I me too. it's just because like when hori said like oh you have other girls i was like i was like what other girls are there i was, I was thinking like there's the other the the kohai but she's one of love with Hori. so like i don't know what other girl you it's after. probably because uh she's david's favorite that's what david remembers nah yeah mm, swear to god david go. if she shows up next week i'm gonna be like fucking david dude he he summoned her <laughs> she's here and not, now we're gonna figure out I'm what happened to her like brother you, no no i don't have ku's power to predict the future mm. all right uh, <laughs> yeah well i'm not predicting shit so uh yeah we'll we'll see all right we'll see yeah, so I think that's gonna be it for this week for Hori Mia. We'll look forward to the rest of the sh this uh, season. Move on next to V Stars, which apparently thanks to the guy in the comment saying, "Yes, pandas can be carnivores; they just choose not to be." So, thanks for the fun fact. Yeah, I was like, I was, I was, I was thinking about, it. you know, why am I even asking Taylor? Like, I'm sure she knows what she's talking about, but I can just go to Google, right? Like, like I thought about it. I was like, okay, I'll just go to Google. And then yeah. uh online like zoology classes you can take. But the problem is I just remembered Google, you have to believe what's written there. It could be from a troll, could be from this like high trusted source. But when I Googled our pandas carnivores, uh or or herbivores, uh I could not find a trusted site. But a lot of them did confirm that they're they're kind they are carnivores, uh, like uh like 
uh, anatomy wise, but they choose not to, I guess. I'm, I'm not really sure how it works. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing too, along with this article. Ham how bamboo eating pandas trick their bodies into thinking they're carnivores. I guess that's really a thing. All I remember right. is I distinctly remember a science class when I was in K through 12. Which where we did talk about pandas and how they eat only bamboo and that's why they're herbivores. So you know what? It's the American school system. We already know it's flawed. Like, but I, what can you say? <laughs> yeah, thanks, NA. NA education here. Um, but yeah, so thank you for the uh, comment. You made me open my horizons and looked up, uh, you know, that that important question of pandas, right? And uh, thank you to Secret Agent Lucario. For that comment <laughs> secret action okay <laughs> cool, name, by cool, the way. Name. cool name uh but yeah this episode uh Akasuku. i wasn't able to take notes when i watched it oh really okay mm -mm. so uh, i remember so yeah. everything but not the order okay so uh basically this episode was focused on riz the the bear uh mm -hmm. the one that did the devouring of temp and mm -hmm. uh basically you know, he's trying to go back to his quiet life. He's trying to enjoy lunch with his friends. But, um, you know, apparently ever since he uh, he ate Tim, like, he just hasn't been the same. Like, not, he can't really taste anything anymore. And then they also hinted it as well when he was cooking for his friends. He was like, hey, you know, like, for some reason, like, this flavoring is really strong. But I still love your cooking. And then that's when he says that he can't uh, taste anything anymore. And then it just focuses on the fact that Logosi is still trying to stop uh, Riz, uh, like with his own sense of just, uh, justice, like, uh, like stopping him his way. And then, you know, you can't forget that, you know, Pina is also involved, uh, since he is the one that's kind of being the, the smooth talker between the two. And, you know, like Riz is slowly starting to lose it. You know, he goes after Pina because he doesn't want to lose his like normal life. Right. And then like in his head, the relationship that he had with Tim before he ate him, or even the uh, that that moment itself, like the devouring, like it was a romantic, uh, like a uh, romantic <laughs> scenario in a sense, oh. mm -hmm. right? Where it's like you know, like it was beautiful. We fully embraced each other. He understood me. I understood him. That's why he let me eat him. You know, stuff like that. So really psycho shit. And coming from this this uh, this bear, like he has this face where you just can't think of him as like an evil creature, right? Like you think mm -hmm. he's he's innocent. He's cuddly. You know, he can do no wrong. Um, but yeah, he's, he's trying to live that normal life and he tries to silent Pina and, uh, you know, Pina being the smooth talker that he is, he's not really strong. So he was able to kind of talk his way out of it. But when like push came to shove and like Riz, like, uh, threatened him in a sense by sucking on his finger or, or telling him that, oh, you know, I'm going to eat you or whatever. Like it did spook Pina a little bit, but, uh, you know, being the smooth talker that he is, he just, uh, tells Riz in a way through acting that he's not afraid, you know, go ahead and do what you must, but I'm going to live my life the way I am or the, the way that I intend to. And when he tries to set up Riz somehow with a letter, um, Legosi was told by Pino what happened. So Legosi tries to stop it, but that's when he came into contact with Riz and they had this, uh, this brawl. And uh, I don't know. It's, it's really weird. Uh, the animation was really nice with the fighting, but like, in the middle of the fight or when they were done, they were trying to like play innocent because there was a janitor there as well. And that and janitor got so it, lucky that he was right. like able to rein it in. I thought for sure she was going to be a goner. <laughs> yeah. So in the middle of the fight, right? Like they're breaking the walls, breaking the mirrors and the, uh, cause they're fighting in the, like in the boys, uh, bathroom and the locker room and mm -hmm. they were fighting in the showers. Yeah. There's a little old lady, like Riz noticed that she was there. So like he runs towards her with that like scary face that he has when he's serious <laughs> And you think that the old lady is dead, right? But no, he just, you know, like pulls a full 180, takes away, like uh, goes back to his normal face. And it's like, you know, I'm sorry, we're still here. Can you leave us alone? You know, blah, blah, blah. And then like everything just goes back to normal. Like Gosi and Riz are having this normal conversation saying, you know, like we'll finish this some other time. Um, but Legosi is like just like reiterating the fact that I'm not going to let you go. Like I trained for this, you know. And then uh, for some reason, the fight comes to a stalemate and they say okay new year's eve that's that's when we'll finish this yeah that was really weird yeah so like the the pacing is really weird like the fighting like uh plot wise it was really weird but i guess now we have like a uh like a like a time as to when the conclusion is going to happen uh so we had until new year's apparently so yeah like i i haven't i didn't really have any issues with the flow of the fight it was different than what i'm used mm -hmm. to seeing but 
it kind of made sense to me that they'd be interrupted. And then with that, with her having diffused the tension for a second there, I can see, I can see why it played out the way that it did. Uh, but yeah, the, I don't really know why they pulled New Year's out, like, as the date to solve this, but whatever, I guess. Mm, yeah. <laughs> unless he means, unless there's, like, something that we completely forgot, like, is that when yeah. the, the show is supposed to take place, or is there... They wouldn't do it uh, on the day of the show, though. I mean, I don't, you, you never know, like, maybe, <laughs> right? I, I don't know. I'm not part of the school. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. That was off. But otherwise, I'm trying to think if there was other uh, really anything. There wasn't really that much to digest. Like, the fight scene took up a lot of the episode this time. It did. Uh, they did have, like, a small moment dedicated to um, Lewis's guardian, mm -hmm. like the lion guy. Like, mm -hmm. he gave one of his colleagues a gun and says, if I ever, like, mm -hmm. lose my senses and I try to eat the boss, you know, shoot me or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe something's happening to him, but they didn't really focus on that too much. So we don't know what's going on. I do think that he's going to play a uh, critical role somehow because, like, like I mentioned it before, like how the ending is like just Lewis and in that guy. Yeah, it right. Just so. seems like <laughs> there'll be something that happens there. I just don't really quite know what yet. I actually wish that we spent a little bit more time with the lions because I would think that the dynamic that they're going through would be just very interesting like to see how each of them feels about lewis like mm. how they feel about the black market like what their goals are like i just i wish we spent more time with them but mm -hmm. what can you do yeah i guess that's i like the fact that they're trying to branch out and give you different plots but mm -hmm. or different stories but uh you know being 12 episodes or whatever and you're trying to have like two different arcs going it, it's kind of hard to keep track or you probably won't get the satisfying conclusion that you want um by the end of the season so oh uh, i think we're gonna have a satisfying conclusion yeah but for both characters because i i always think of like lewis haru and lagosi as the main characters mm -hmm. right are we just gonna focus on lagosi or focus on lewis you know i think it's gonna be both i think they're gonna have to come together to do this i think they're we're gonna be satisfied in the same by the same plot element <laughs> i just again don't know what it'll be yet that's my gut feeling uh i find it hard to believe because like Lagosi is more focused on like the school life and then Lewis is focused on like the black market story, right? So I really don't know how that's going to come together unless for some reason Lewis captures Haru again and then Lagosi has to like go after her and you know just Lewis captures Haru? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He's he's in charge of the organization that did it before, so you know, like <laughs> Why wouldn't he do it again? I don't know. Like, we'll see. But but Lagosi did ask Lewis to come back to the school and said that he needed him. So maybe he'll go back to the school and to help resolve all this devouring stuff before he goes back to the black market because so, nothing really needs to be resolved in the black market right now you know uh yeah Not that's that I true of. i mean yeah, it's not just like side stories in a sense you know i mm -hmm. guess so i guess that's I think he's gonna go back that's what i think can't but what about but what about cosmo you can't forget about cosmo you know you can't just introduce this stripper girl and then you know have her show interest in lewis and just have her like gone forever you know like well there was also Juno, although I don't know if that was like showing interest or not. Because remember, Juno saw him there. She knows that he's there, and they had their little dance moment. Ah, uh, no one cares about Juno. It's okay. <laughs> I have to admit, I liked Cosmo too. <laughs> Cosmo's <laughs> where it's at, you know. Yeah, like, Juno's just not making it work for me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, like I said, I mean, I'm just biased, but uh, I mean, it's it's whatever. I, I, if they do manage to merge the the two stories together, I think that'll be pretty amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. But I guess we'll see how how it works. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's oh. all I've got. You got anything more cool? Uh, what do you What are your thoughts on the animation so far? Because for some, like, I don't know why, but for CGI, this is probably like the best animation I've seen for a fight scene, mm -hmm. and, and like in all the CGI animes I've ever watched. So, but my, uh, I guess my. Um, I have a low standard when it comes to animation, so I don't know what your <laughs> thoughts were, I guess. Dude, I was, gonna good say, or not. I was gonna say the same thing. Like Stratton gives me shit all the time about how like my standard for animation isn't high enough or I can't tell the difference between things. I think it's beautiful. Like I have absolutely no issues with any of the animation in this entirety of seasons one or two. I think it's great. I mean, honestly, I think it the whole show is more attractive to me and flows better than like Attack on Titan, not to give it hate. There's enough of that out there already, but right. um, j just like in comparison, like I I, I watch this show and I'm just like in awe of how pretty it is. There's even with the fight scene too. 
Yeah, it's pretty and smooth, which is really mm -hmm. nice. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just just want to point it out. Like, I thought I was going to like bomb in the animation department once they started fighting or brawling, but I yeah, did not. I, was, I was really surprised. It was actually like top notch in my yeah. in my standard. So, yeah, I completely uh, agree. I like. I feel like. A lot of people have a lot of thoughts about the show, like before they start watching it. But I feel like once people actually start watching it, the animation doesn't bother them. Hmm. I haven't heard any like from people in my personal life. I haven't been seeking out people's opinions on the Internet regarding that. Hmm. Um, but I haven't known anybody in real life who's had any issue. I mean, I know uh, some uh, people who hate it because it's animals like furries, but it's like, oh yeah, well, yeah, that's different. Like, so what if it's an animal? Like, what well, makes it so weird? So is this the first thing you've ever seen where it's, like, animals as people rather than humans? Like, I, I don't see what the problem is. Yeah, you've all say, seen it. I was going to say, a Go lot ahead, of people David. praise the animation, so I haven't really seen any backlash for it. They say it's, like, yeah. 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 It's just different. Oh, yeah. Uh, that That's all I had for this week. Same. I'm just going to throw shade at Stratton because I'm pretty sure he doesn't give the show a shot because it's all animals. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly yeah. why. It's so all I'm animals, up. it's all CG, Grow and he's up, just like, right? no. The issue is it's all animals and nothing to deal with the CGI. No, okay, sir. It's all, it's all the CGI, guys. I, I, I'm fine with the animals. Okay, what do you say, sir? I'm telling you the truth. I don't care it's animals. That's, that's <laughs> fine. Right, whatever. Whatever. Right, so whatever. Well, that, uh, <laughs> I was afraid of that slippery slope. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna be it for Beastars this week. Move on to our next show. Um, sure, you want to talk a little about the Slime Tensei show? Oh boy! I mean, well, actually, um, I actually, <laughs> I actually caught up to this, but I barely remember what I marathon. So you can take it away, sir. Uh, so we'll talk about further a little bit. See, cool. You watched it too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, w it was basically just them planning. Like, I actually skipped to the episode because I thought, like, when like how they started it, I was mm -hmm. like, wait, did I already see this? And then I, I actually skipped <laughs> through like halfway, and I realized I was like, oh wait, no, this is actually new stuff, and it was just them reiterating mm -hmm. their plan. Oh. Uh, and I, I don't know. I, I still kind of hate how they like. There's actually a, a good portion of this episode I actually skipped. Uh, I skipped through it just because it was just the old you know back and forth where it's just like. I really hate how like where like how they're talking about how weak they are. They go kind of go through the list. It's mm -hmm. like we get it. You guys aren't actually weak. You, very, you were very, again in very, the barrier. Very Japanese meeting of them. Yes. Yes. I, I hated it. And then the whole thing was basically it's like oh it's like my fault. Oh no no it's my fault. I'm like again, okay very yeah. Japanese Japanese. Yeah. All that like, the, the good old humble brag. Yes. Humble, yeah. 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 So there's a good chunk yeah. again that I skipped through. Uh, and it was just like that stuff. It felt like it was going on forever. And then, and again, then there was more like the. Uh, there was the, oh, the oh the one part I completely forgot too is that Rimuru can just make hearts. <laughs> I forgot all about that. No, he can he can make things. Yes. And yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but, I mean heart. he can make stuff, but I didn't realize he could actually make hearts too. But apparently, he can make and he can make things like that too. Uh, but it's next episode. I actually am kind of hyped for just because I want to see Rimuru just devastate everybody. And Dude, I, I wanted to see that this episode. I got blue balled so hard because I, I knew I, I thought it was going to happen. But then the first half of that episode was basically just a reiteration of what we learned last the, the second half of last week, yeah. right? And then like you you got like everyone all set up. They showcase all the characters, what the plan is. Uh, okay, it's about to go down, right? And then fucking the ending pops up, and it's like, has it really been twenty minutes? Like, like what the fuck? Oh, and this... then now we gotta wait till next week. This was the quickest episode I've ever watched of Slime Show because, like, again, I I skipped at least five minutes, and like, and then I skipped through it like at, like later on just to see if I missed anything. Absolutely mm -hmm. missed nothing, and it it, it was. Uh, just, yeah. But um, but now I just wanted Rimmer to just murder everybody. I, I swear, if it's somehow a workaround where he can somehow, um, like uh, was it like where all these people survive in some sort of way and then basically do like a Doctor Stone deal. Oh man, I'm gonna be flipping tables and throwing chairs. <laughs> Even though I already like have no really hope for this time show, like this is it, it basically it is what it is at this point. No, to be fair, like the two episodes ago, it gave me hope that it's going to start picking up and do a better job with its pacing and like having a story that's actually uh, like has substance to it, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, hopefully they actually go through with it. 
and you, you know they are just NPCs. So hopefully he does go through the uh, the slaughtering of twenty thousand soldiers. I mean, yeah. not really. Um, I mean, there's still people in this isekai world, not really NPCs. <laughs> there's not them all. So. They're, they're, they're basically NPCs. Okay. <laughs> I'm it's just, NPCs. Man, it's NPCs. Immediately Strand, NPCs. I would say it's just for Strand. Like, I'm really annoyed at, like, that while wow, you just have all we, we have these people die, it's like, oh, we can still revive them. No worries. Like, really? Like, like when I first watched it, I was like, holy shit, are they actually taking a dark tone in this? And they were kind of going with it. I was like, I was like, oh, god damn, they just killed, like, the best waifu off. And then they just said, like, oh, like, there's actually a 3% chance. I was like, well, it might as well just be 100%. Like, I think we just know that's going to happen. I, I mean, if they don't revive, like if if Shion and the other uh, um, goblin guy don't revive, uh, I mean, I would be shocked, but I, I I don't think there's any chance that they're not going to be revived. But that's that's basically my thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. But I, don't know, I really have nothing. I mean, I, I, we'll get to hopefully see like you know death and destruction in the next episode. Yeah, I am. I am kind of hyped up for next week's episode. Hopefully, they go through with it because in the OP, they do kind of like uh, tease his demon lord form, which is apparently him in a black coat, a little bit taller, maybe. I don't. I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> so but, not a slime, right? So yeah, I don't like. Apparently, he does go through. With, uh, like he does become a demon lord. Now we just got to see how he acquires it. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Just God, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, I'm yeah, going to move on to the next episode All or right, show. Yeah. That's going to be it for it's slime show. And I didn't watch um, Block Horizon again. So, oh, I watched it, but oh. I got nothing to say. Like, it will actually, be missed. I, mean, I, I watched like uh, that one. I'm so you want to watch Shrine of Part Two of Krusty. And like, I'm so uh, confused. Yeah. So, I don't want to say anything here. Like, <laughs> I tried watching it and it's like, I'm so confused. I need like, I need, oh, back, I need the Reddit thread, honestly, at this point. Yeah. Like, I can't do it myself. It's it's like their little thing that they always say. It's like, oh, like, you know, they bend the rules or something like that. I was like, guys, you bend the rules like way too much in this show. Like, where it's the point where it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. But so, anyway, whatever. So that's all I'll mention for Lock Horizon. And then um, you guys can get started. Uh, but, so, our next show, you guys can get started on um, Kimono Jihan. Oh, so I fucking called it. The brother pops up. <laughs> and he's a total badass, of course. To, yes. To his, to his profitabilities again coming to fruition. Of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. Mm-hmm. It just comes to me naturally. I don't know what to say. Um, Yeah, take it away, Ku. I'll let you kind of share your thoughts first. Yeah, so just when you thought that you couldn't hate on Akra anymore, they showcase how cool his brother was and the fact that Akra was totally useless. Like this whole two-thirds of the episode it was basically just like, even kabane just like saying what the audience felt like yeah you're useless that's 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 how you've always been from the get-go it doesn't bother me at all like blah 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 and then it's apparently he's important because he like takes care of the social aspect i guess where uh he keeps the like the the group close and he's able to help mediate if need be um, you know, w- whatever, but yeah, without, without Akira around, like Kabane and Shika are able to do their jobs a lot easier, faster, you know, like, like whatever. They're able to just get things done efficiently. And, uh, apparently Yui is back and he's in town and he was looking for Akira for some reason. And, uh, you know, like with Akira running away because he's useless, um, he meets up with Yui, you know, they run away together and Yui builds his giant ice castle in, in the middle of the park, which... By the way, if you're trying to run away and you want to be like conspicuous about it, that's the best way to do yeah. it, I guess. Right? Just do it in the, like in the middle of a park. It makes no sense. And then, uh, yeah, it, and it turns out that like Yui is like wants to take care of Akira, but he wants to do it his way because he's very stern. Like, there's no exceptions, but he's still willing to kind of listen to Akira's like uh, like request when it comes down to say, I want a bath, want a light, you know, whatever. And mm-hmm. uh, the thing that kind of bothers me, and I and like it's, it's kind of a cliche thing, so I knew it was going to happen. But it looks like when uh, Kabane, Shiki, and Inugami, even when they went to go like investigate the, the ice castle and like try to figure out what's going on, they actually lost to Yui and got frozen. And like at the end of the episode, like Yui comes back up, he frees Akira, shows him what he made for him, and like you see that like all three of them are are trapped. And it's up to Akira to use the power of friendship to not be useless and <laughs> save everyone. So. That was right. the episode. Uh, I don't know. What, what were you guys' thoughts on it? I don't no. care. 
<laughs> I just, right. There I, it is. I just don't care anymore. I just feel like this show is nothing but a giant steaming pile of missed potential. And I'm. Hmm. That's my thought. Justin, take yeah, it away. I, <laughs> yeah, no, I I mean, I think admittedly that's that's a fair stance to take with what we've seen from this show this season. Um, I think for me, there's a lot of as with everything in the show, you know, conveniences, especially like who said like, oh, this is the episode that, of course, Akira, you know, uh, gets fed up and, you know, decides that he's useless and leaves. And, you know, just it so happens that Yui is also now in Tokyo of all times to, oh, you again. know, have this meeting um, occur. And then the other part that I didn't like was the rationale for, you know, as we saw kind of the flashbacks of Yui and Akira and the village that they grow up in, mm -hmm. um, it kind of gives a bit more understanding of like, you know, how sheltered they were and kind of from like this demon tribe, like they were basically kept under full lockdown, never knew their mother uh, that passed away by giving the birth to them. And then their father was basically kept detained and basically devolved into something not even human. So there wasn't even that relationship there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I enjoyed that part. Um, but in terms of Yui and the Null Stone that he has, like, implanted in his chest, I was just like, oh, cool. Uh -huh. So there's, <laughs> right? It's, like, partially that. And then, too, it's like, oh, of course there's a stone that's similar to Kabane's, you know, Life Stone or whatever it was called that, you know, suppresses his abilities. And now there's a complete opposite called the Null Stone, which basically cranks demons abilities into overdrive mode and that's why you know yui is kind of going off the handle of sorts and like mm -hmm. you said ku i think it's going to come down to akira through the power of um family and friendship and all this other stuff she's going to remove that null stone and then yui is going to become a good guy all of a sudden yep. because now he's not being like controlled by that stone or whatever mm -hmm. so yep. yeah i'm, I'm kind of fed up with things as well um but hey we don't have that much more episodes left, so we'll just finish it off here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'll finish it off. I'm pretty much here just for, like, the casual chats between people. Like, I laugh mm -hmm. a lot when with, like, Shiki and Kabane when they were uh, bickering, basically, back at the office. Um, I, I, like, I'm, I, I enjoy the dialogue that they have in those scenes, and I'm pretty much here for that. I mean, it just seems like all of their more serious plot elements are wrapped up so conveniently in, in the most basic simple way possible yep. i just yeah. oh okay i have another thing that i thought of that i really didn't like so to the point of being inconspicuous and you know forming an ice castle basically in the middle of a park in tokyo the thing that i really didn't like is when um inugami and kabane and shiki show up and then inugami's like oh good like um you know there are reporters here but they're not recording live so nobody will see this and meanwhile you have people right next to them like filming it on their smartphones like posting mm -hmm. it on social media and stuff and it's like what well, what was the point of that yeah. line? Like that was a pointless line. Literally, <laughs> literally, they like he had already been posting like when the castle first went up. Like yeah. it's already out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that but... was the part that was just like a small gripe where it's just like it, it's nonsensical. Like I get it, you're trying to say like, oh, okay, that's why like not all of you know Tokyo is freaking out about mm. this, but mm. it's like the, you literally have people right next to them yeah. with their smartphones, and then as Taylor said later in the show, Akira is commenting like. Oh, look how many comments we're getting on social media. This is great. Like, well, but to be fair, it wasn't confirmed that it was by kimonos, right? So it could just be some kind of magical device yeah. or human that, that caused it to appear. It's, it, it's just another convenient plot device of Inari being, you know, the head of the police and everything. And anytime there's anything related to, you know, demons and kimonos, Inugami's just like, oh, yeah, Inari will take care of that. I got her in my back pocket. Like, you know, she can she can fix all this and like not make humans, you know, figure out about demons and all this other stuff. So, yep. again, it, reading too much into it, but it's just those things when there's not that much substance at the at the show that I pick up on it more and more. True. Um, and I think as well, like, I honestly wanted to see more of Mihai and his backstory, but I really don't think we're going to get that. It's kind of just like, hey, he's a, you know, 10,000 year old vampire that loves to play MMOs and he can basically fix anything or do anything with technology. And I think that's yeah. where they're kind of leaving it. <laughs> he's there to yeah. progress the plot when it needs to be progressed and you need a character that does those things. That's it. Yeah, yep. So, Yeah. It is what it is. And, you know, if by some 
miracle of a reason it gets a second season, then good for them. Whether or not I'll be around for it, that's uh, looking more and more like a no. But hey, you I'll never be honest, know. If there was a second season, I would probably still watch it. I'll probably still watch it too. There's nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. If there's not things taking up, you know, my bandwidth of of show allotment, then yeah. Right. If it seems, well, it all depends how and how the season's gonna end. What mm-hmm. are they gonna try to force into it, or what are they gonna leave open ended? That's like, okay, hey, like it looks like there is much more substance here. And I think as last week we said, we know there's a lot of content from the source materials. So uh-huh. hopefully, you know, th- they can be a little bit more creative, and it's not just like a forced like original ending if uh if a second season isn't in the cards here yeah i mean definitely especially since this is just season one right you throw all the intros out the way like you kind of promote out the story the plots uh like the purpose of the mc and what they're trying to do if you can just dump all that here and then season two just get going with like the main the main stuff like the stuff that has potential right mm-hmm. uh like maybe it'll be a good uh it'll be a good show like who knows a lot of people seem to like the manga, so uh, yeah, it can't so. be that bad. I'm assuming. Hmm. Interesting. We shall see. Yeah, yeah I think that's uh, everything I at least had for this week's episode. Same. Yep. All right, so we're gonna end it here for now. Before I came out with Jihen, move on to our next show. Uh, I want to talk about the I'm as far so what. Ooh, I really liked the episode this week because. Now, with what we've learned in this week's episode, I feel like in things that we talked about last week, we Mm. now may have kind of mischaracterized in terms of characters that we thought were potentially Kumiko. Mm. Um, But now I'm thinking that, you know, this demon lord is not Kumiko. Um, And the reason for that is so in this episode, um, I guess first, you know, again, as per usual, we pick up with Kumiko and kind of her talking about like her recent interaction with the administrator and just them and the internal like Kumiko bodies talking about like, oh man, Mm -hmm. like, okay, do we have to be worried about this administrator? It looks like they definitely have a lot of power in this world. And they're kind of just like, okay, yeah, like we recognize she's here, but we won't worry about her for now. So Mm -hmm. that was kind of the first part. But what was really great was then the backstory that we get with um, Shlaine and the royal family. We get Hmm. to meet two of Shalane's other brothers. Um, And so we can kind of see from these brothers that um, upon learning that Shalane acquired the title of hero, um, Lustin, the more sympathetic brother, um, doesn't really seem too concerned about that occurring. But the other brother, Silas, um, who is a little bit cold in terms of like this revelation and kind of like, okay, yeah, he's dead. Like, what are we going to do next? Hmm. Um, it was interesting to see, like, there's obviously that inner family feud of, like, I, those two brothers probably expected, like, they were going to become hero. Not that, you know, Shlaine, as a younger brother, was going to become hero. Hmm. Um, so I liked getting a little bit more insight there into kind of, like, the royal family in, in that instance. And then we learn about the war between humans and demons. Uh, one mm-hmm. of the soldiers comes into that meeting and kind of gives them, like, a status report of how there were, like, four attacks um staged against different like fortresses and all but one of the fortresses withstood the attack because they had this like really op mage named renant Mm -hmm. and um with him this is kind of where i'm now getting into the tie-in with kumiko and kind of the demon lord's identity as well is that um Mm -hmm. renant tells one of the soldiers a um story about the um, I'm trying to think what he called it. Nightmare of the Labyrinth. That's yep. what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this story took place 15 years from the current events of the demons attacking these fortresses that Renant and the others just kind of fended off at. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, we get this 15-year backstory into the Nightmare of the Labyrinth, which happens to be in this labyrinth or cave area that Kumiko is in that we've been seeing, you know, this entire time throughout the show. And eventually, as they're kind of exploring the the cave and everything, um, Renant and this other individual who... Um, do you remember the other person's name, Ku? The guy who's like, kind of like the beast master or whatever? I can't remember his name. Uh, um, I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, not that it's super important. But anyways, he's there with this other guy who kind of has some importance um, in terms of like Renant and his relationship and kind of the reason why they're down there in the first place. But mm-hmm. anyways... Um, they, you know, travel through this cave, and as they're going into the upper or middle stratum of this cave labyrinth, um, they run into Kumiko, 
which also was the same spider that from earlier in the season is the spider that Julius fought and um, basically obliterated. Mm -hmm. So um, with that fact, I actually didn't put two and two together that the spider that Julius fought earlier was Kumiko. I didn't really think that was Kumiko. I don't think that was Kumiko, no. You don't think so? No. Okay. Because there was no... There was no direct correlation as to if that was Kumuk or not, even though it looked like it was the same spider. Um, so, but okay. So the only reason I'll say that I think it's Kumiko is right. that since that design of the spider Julius fought, and then now the spider that Renant is recollecting in this mm-hmm. fifteen year ago story, right? They they're this, they look exactly the same. The spider, likewise. And that spider that Renant fights is using the different like eye abilities, which the episode before yep. Kumiko talked about, you know, developing all these eye abilities and everything. Mm-hmm. And so now that I'm personally thinking that that was Kumiko that originally fought against, you know, Renant and them. And then when they were trying to escape, because this spider was like super OP, um, it ends up taking off Renant's right arm and then killing the other guy as they're trying to teleport out there. Yep. Um, but furthermore, if it is the same spider, and then we know that spider got killed by Julius, and that spider before it was killed by Julius was kind of struck in into terror by mm-hmm. like this mind link or whatever when we first see the demon lord spider. Um, I'm really interested now to see if that is Kumiko, and then who uh, is then the identity of this demon lord, if that's not Kumiko. No, I'm pretty sure it's still Kumiko. I uh, think so. Yeah, because if if you uh, if uh, I guess you would have to really think about the details, right? When Julius fought it, it was during the timeline of uh, just like the timeline was a little bit different. I wouldn't say it's exactly the same, but I want to say there was a different time gap from when mm-hmm. Reinhardt was talking about his battle with the spider and when Julius had the battle with the spider. And then just with the fact that it was confirmed that the one that Reinhardt was talking about was Kumiko, since it didn't uh, directly state that the spider that Julius fought was Kumiko, I, I don't think we can say that they're the same spider. Fair. Yeah, and I'm actually, I'm reading uh, Darren's comments as well in the Twitch chat here. So it's definitely something that with all the time skips and everything, it, it definitely can be a bit misleading. And so... Right. Um, <laughs> But that's kind of like the uh, the nice thing about this show is the fact that they they throw things in there to kind of like throw you in for a loop, right? Mm-hmm. So you don't you don't know for sure exactly what's going to happen because yeah. I'm thinking that that the uh, the white haired chick that's currently with the current demon lord, like she's probably like the body double of Kumiko, uh, but it, that's just speculation; mm-hmm. it's not confirmed. Um, you know, so as of right now, everything is just pure speculation. Although it seems like they like we are correct, but. You know, until it's been confirmed, I don't think we can just say that, you know, we're right or wrong. So, no, definitely. And I, I, I totally agree with, like you said, with kind of this different timelines, it does give more kind of food for thought. And especially like myself, like I might be going down a complete wrong path, but mm-hmm. I can't help with, you know, the information that we've gotten in those. And maybe I'm just like missing kind of some key points, like you said, of like the two different engagements between mm-hmm. Julius and the spider and then Renant and the spider. Mm -hmm. um so yeah i'm definitely interested to to see you know what the true story ends up being in terms of um those interactions and then um i think other than that there wasn't much else to the episode other than uh we finally after renan's story and everything um of his involvement with that spider in the cave we go back to kumiko and um she levels up levels up again and decides to evolve from her Zoa L into an Ede Sane, I think is what the two um, yeah. classifications were called. Um, so, and then the last line was that her taboo had maxed out at level, to level 10. 10. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know. I like, I don't know if it's going to be another spider form or this is where she starts to get a humanoid form. I mean, she does, the demon Lord does kind of have like that lowly vibe or body figure. So mm-hmm. it wouldn't surprise me if the next form is like that form. Right. Yeah. And then uh one thing I forgot to mention too was uh I I want to say because of how they they reference what happened uh between Julius and his engagement, uh what they got from the expedition, which was that Earth Dragon egg, which is where uh Faye was from, right? Mm-hmm. That was like when Kumiko was still in like her early stages, right? 
So that happened Correct. way before uh, when when Kumoko confirmed was fighting against Reinhardt and the other guys. So, mm-hmm. and I think that spider oh, that true that that uh, Julius and I came across, he did kill him. So in that sense, that could have been Kumoko. Otherwise, she would have been dead. You know. Yeah. So that's why, like, I'm thrown for a loop where. In your case, then it's probably not Kumiko. Yeah, but it's probably it is by, it, it by somehow be. that. Yeah, I'm just wondering, yeah. like, maybe she did get obliterated, and then Administrator D came in and you know did did her thing and brought her back as Demon Lord Lolly form. <laughs> I don't know, right? You know, but, like but I think, that. like you said, we won't know until we see next week's episode if we did get to see what that new form of right. hers looks like when she evolves. So, yep. So yeah, just just all speculation from this point, but uh, I I'd, I'd say we are like probably ninety percent correct with all our guesses. I'm, yeah, I'm going. I think to we're, we're doing a good job of covering the bases. <laughs> I mean, your your profitabilities have definitely driven us in the right the right direction, and then now I'm just kind of uh you know having a mm. dartboard up on the wall and just throwing up and seeing whatever whatever sticks. And then we'll yeah, basically, <laughs> basically just crazy so. conspiracy theories mapped out. So we'll we'll definitely. see. But yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much everything otherwise. But again, this is a show that has, you know, pleasantly surprised me um, from, you know, the original kind of explanation of a, a typical isekai trope. And it's definitely shown that it's it's more than that and that the world yeah. is really coming together in a carefully thought manner, or at least hopefully with what we've been given so far. So yep. decided to continue with it. Most definitely. Why well, is this always got to be uh, Lolly, Demon Lords, and these isekais, man? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. You know, maybe All Japanese the people, they just got weird tastes, you know? <laughs> they got to have their lolies. Wow. I don't know. Maybe okay. it's something uh, in history, you know? Maybe something in history. The demons were lolies. Who knows? Lolies oh, sell. Why yeah. not? If, if, if Hori's talk, can't kink shame, all right? Mm-hmm. Damn all right. right. Damn so, right. <laughs> that's going to be it for uh, I'm a Spider, So What? Move on to our next show. You guys want to talk about Wonder Egg Priority? Oh man! So, so uh, just take it away. No, uh, no, no, no! You guys take it away because I was right. talking for a while there for. Yeah. It's for all you, Strider. No, actually, I, I talked to Justin before he and I don't remember. So, oh my um, god, you guys are all useless. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't remember everything. Oh, okay. I just, I just, I just don't want to dominate. You know, the, the opening needed, conversation I, here. So, I, I'd like you know, cool you or Taylor to to jump in if you guys. Hey, Taylor, jump start. Taylor, you got this, Taylor. Let me read my notes. You're not going to like yeah. them very much. I just need a jump uh, start, finish, and then I'll, 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 I'll be good to go. Oh, God. Okay. Take it away. Um, the girls go to Neidu's house, which is her company, question mark. Does she run the company? Oh, right. I don't know. Okay. Does she have skills? Start, and you want to start there? <laughs> Who has she's skills? a genius. Neidu. Because she's like... Yeah, she's like a... She's like a, she's like a she's genetically like a modified prophet. surrogate... Yeah. Super child that was part of this elite Japanese program. Yeah. So she can just run a company as a high schooler then, or middle schooler? Uh, what? No, high schooler. I, I guess so. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that high much. school? Check out. School. Yeah. 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 Seems qualified yeah, that, to me. Huh. That's that's logical. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Apparently, she's super smart. Artificially inseminated. Mm-hmm. She was friends mm-hmm. with another person who was artificially inseminated. Okay, that's my first question. Why are they artificially inseminating? these kids like was that answered did i miss that <laughs> why i think it's just because they wanted to create a generation of geniuses i, I, I imagine i mean yeah I, I can't i can't remember what the program specifically is called but they basically have a classification of these individuals that are like the elite or the smartest of the smartest in japan so they're pretty much just you, you know gathering that gene pool and just reproducing well, individuals like, of that high quality like intellect right it seems like they almost make them though for like this like victi's dream dives because it seems like you know both of them were the were like and i don't want to say like made for this but they were both ended up doing it oh i wouldn't say they're making yeah. it for yeah, these, I, didn't for these get projects. That I think i think it's just smart people wanting to have like created more smart people i guess yeah okay so that's so that was the first part that was really interesting i'm glad you brought that up uh Seretin, is that after you know we get that explanation of of course you know nehru would have happened to live at the company just down in the basement um <laughs> and that you know she was created basically in a lab and um the interesting part was that we get to see that the girls are sitting in like the theater and the secretary is showing them the dreams are what they call dreams of Nehru, which is, you know, all these experience that we've seen the girls having fighting these, you know, mysterious, like, entities or whatever, you know, and mm-hmm. helping out these these other um, individuals that have committed suicide. Right. 
Um, so that's where, you know, the, what's the word I want to use? Oh man. Things really start to open up, I guess, in terms of like conspiracies yeah. and, you know, like evil corporate, like endeavors and things of that nature. Like, yeah, they, they dropped a lot, like in those last like yeah. few minutes. Yeah. So, know, yeah. Like, we'll like definitely, we'll definitely get to that episode. as well. Yeah. The, the ending was kind of just like, whoa. So, Crazy. but, um, before we get to that, um, Her vegetable as fun. you mentioned, Taylor, yeah. So, they have the the you know like uh play date i guess we'll call it at Nehru's company they have the cutesy moment of you know painting each other's nails and having like the one nail that's a different color that you know connects them all um and then you know Nehru just nonchalantly is like hey you guys want to meet my friend and they're just like <laughs> you're, you're what and you just know like like, <laughs> pan to you know ominous <laughs> moving to a you know medical room where of course one of the uh screens are pulled shut and Nehru just opens it and is just like oh hey here's my uh albino friend that is currently a vegetable what do you guys think and they're all just like uh, uh cool like hey why, so we really matched the energy of the episode. Wow, I don't watch <laughs> it's the like, show. Oh, and I'm like, what am I hearing here? Like, yeah, um, it, it completely fits the girl that you know lives at this company and everything. So um, I'll give them a little bit of leeway for that. Um, but anyways, yeah, we we learn about this this albino vegetable girl that was another girl that's part of the same program um, as Nehru. Um, and basically we learned that the reason that she is currently in a vegetative state is that <laughs> she was, um, kind of a scientist of sorts. And she experimented with things involving like near death experiences, which again is now kind of, you know, connecting these things in my mind of like the whole concept of the show and like these suicides in this, you know, other dream world or whatever, you know, this world may be. Um, but basically, she's a vegetable because she got too close to, I guess, like the source of truth of, you know, what is kind of this like different state death. near death. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, a, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, I mean, after that, like, uh, then it goes like drops like in the, those last five minutes. But I actually like the last five minutes because it just opened up a bunch of other things. Because one where it's just like where people are able to actually like watch, view, record these uh, these dreams. And then you also kind of got a little bit more on the mannequins where it's like, you don't, cause I mean, they're speaking to the mannequins. Um, the, mm -hmm. I don't want to call like the Nehru mom. I'm not quite sure who she is. Her secretary. Um, the secretary. Like secretary or facilitator yeah. is a good word for it. Yeah. Oh God. It's a facilitator. It it's big, big corporate, like evil conspiracy yep. terminology. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. That's so like, so you kind of open up like with, like with those things, but, and then I think the, uh, we can also bring up the, the whole, the whole thing question if the mannequins are good or evil again it seems like one it almost seems like one is still you know kind of a good the other one just seems evil or at least following just like whatever the hell the rules are supposed to be i don't know if he's truly evil mm -hmm. but um no they're all evil <laughs> all oh evil. okay okay uh but it, it definitely opens up like more of the the whole thing where it just seems like this uh where it seems like the the company or the business or whatever it has like different motives and then also they also dropped like where um you know what they're doing is also not what they think they are they're what, what they've been doing or was, or was that last episode um i think that was last episode okay yeah, yeah. but they, they kind of went like i guess like went a little bit more or, uh, into it as well mm -hmm. yeah no i i think for me like this is the darker side that i partially wanted i didn't really want it to be that you know oh of course it's just like you know corporate like evil yeah. underhanded like technology kind of led us to this point um i wish it was something more otherworldly admittedly mm -hmm. but that's that's just myself um but i i totally agree with you right and it now brings up this question of okay uh akka and uru akka the two mannequins um obviously look to have been developed by this company uh -huh. yeah. I, I don't think they're human they haven't given off any you know traces of them being I, human <laughs> i wouldn't think so <laughs> Um, they're almost like robots is what I took it. I think they even like showed like one of the eyes and like the eyes were like glowing from them. Um, but I, I would definitely agree that there is potentially something there where either, you know, one of the mannequins isn't really kind of agreeing with what they're doing because, you know, now we really understand that, you know, this company is very interested in um, Kotobuki, the um, albino girl, mm -hmm. the friend of Nehru. And they really want to learn more about like this near death like state. And 
I wouldn't be surprised if that they're the ones who caused others somehow to commit suicide in the first place in like some really oh. weird roundabout way where, you know, they're trying to foster these girls to bring into this program to then mm. have them, you know, basically be their lab rats and understand, you know, more about this world, more about, you know, this near death experience or this near death state. And now just being like a really underhanded corporate scheme that's kind of coming to play. For the improvement of science or whatever is like their, you know, driving motive. Yeah, the only thing with that though is like, how would they know, like, you know, which girls it is? Like, is it one of those where they say, like, you know, yeah, and that's where it's it's a very loose, yeah. Because I would say, like, if if it was like in the U.S. or something, I would say, like, you know, maybe so. But then in Japan, where they just kind of bottle it up, nobody says anything. I I don't know how, like, who or they would really like reach out to. If that was, even if those were saying like, oh, if you like need to talk about or something, go here. That doesn't really seem like a thing or if somehow they just know that they're going through this tour to, like this some sort of tour, turmoil like yeah. uh, i mean if they can just jump into people's dreams in a sense like aren't even like a part of these like if they can somehow like locate these people um because uh, it, it doesn't seem like they need to be in any kind of specific uh um uh uh what's, what's the hell's the term like a place for this it just kind of seems like you can just kind of fall asleep wherever you want and then um, these dreams are being recorded, or maybe maybe it was only in the 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 corporation that it was actually happening, because we only saw Nehru's. Yeah, true. Mm, I don't know. I feel like if you have the technology to create a machine to view people's dreams, I'm sure you can kind of stretch that out to other devices that can like spy on people. Yeah, it's kind of like it's, almost like a, anime, so. a psychopath. <laughs> type moment where you know big corporate is really kind of connected to more things than is originally kind of shown and you know now we're exactly as taylor said like trying to just unpack that all because it opens up a lot of potential doors of things which, so. which kind of sucks because we only have like three episodes left <laughs> oh yeah see yeah. that's how I, I was thinking like i actually i like the kind of like evil corporation sci-fi route ish maybe type of thing that they're going for mm-hmm but, like, I mean, we only have three episodes left. Are they going to do more? There's no source material. So I'm a little bit anxious about that. But honestly, yeah. like, I really don't have a strong basis for it. this. It actually just came to my head while we were talking about it. But I realized that the vibes that this show gives me are really more along the lines of, like, Death Parade. Like I'd mentioned before mm. that the two egg mannequins are, um, they, like, kind of reminded me of, like, the Arbiters from from Death Parade where... Um, I don't think, like, I just don't get the feeling from them that they're outright, like, good or evil. Um, they're there to, like, serve a purpose mm-hmm. rather than anything else. So if they were doing evil things, it's, like, kind of more as a consequence of what they've been designed for, made for, instructed to do. We don't even know if, what they are. Um, and it, like, I don't know, like, it just seemed like such a, like, tone shift, at least to me it did, switching to yeah. this kind of by feeling. That, uh, uh, it, it, like, I feel like it's almost like a red herring, kind of. And, like, this is still going to be more of, like, a human drama-based thing somehow. I'm explaining it really badly. It just came to my head, but. Oh, what if? I just thought about it. What if, like, Here we these go, the girls. Profit. Yeah, right. God. Like, they're not the ones that are alive, but they're actually the ones who are dead. Right? Okay. Wait, wait, okay. Wait, who's dead? Who's dead? Like, the four main girls. I, Rika, okay. Nehru. Like mm-hmm. Momoi, like what mm-hmm. if they're actually the ones that are dead and they're in limbo? Yeah, and they're 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 fighting to kind of like redeem themselves. Like they're in, like yeah. they're like they're the ones in a vegetable state. It's yeah. not really uh, Kotobuki, mm-hmm. but uh, Kotobuki is the one that's the closest mm-hmm. to getting to the girls because she's the mm-hmm. genius, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so what if that's the case? Yeah, like right. that's kind of like I mean, the feeling that I get. Like that's where my mind's been kind of like <laughs> running around, but I right. can't get a solid feel. As soon as you get a hypothesis, the show's just like, never mind. Here, let's go right. Yeah, I mean it's the fact too. Like you said, Taylor, like you get a hypothesis, but then it's like, okay, we yeah. only have this many episodes left. Like, yeah. how do you tie all that together without just mm-hmm. like you know mashing it as hard as you can like through the door to just be like, all right, here it is. Like. Mm. we did it did you like it and it's just like okay that can either go really well if they've set it up that way or it can be like okay you know you opened up this really like elaborate like plot device or plot point now and now you just don't have you know the leeway to really um stretch it out or really kind of you know uh, investigate it further oh dude so. that 
if it turns out to be that way though oh my god that's <laughs> so good what a what a twist <laughs> we're all just in a simulation <laughs> nothing is real honestly i would like that explanation the most i feel like it would wrap things up in my head a lot more neatly because like why does an evil why is why although like an evil corporation i feel like probably wouldn't be targeting teenage girls they're like a pretty protected like group of people they are mm -hmm. literally have to show up to like one place the same time every day they've got parents that are guardians over them like i mean it's not exactly easy to just like bring teenagers into the <laughs> yeah so, yeah like, i, I agree with that why not find home like this is terrible it's definitely a tough thing to try <laughs> to like explain and make fit with the yeah no i totally get where you're coming from um and then yeah the only other part that we didn't talk about was just how um Nehru before the girls kind of left and everything he was just like oh yeah like they're gonna take you know Kotobuki and like use her for further research with her vegetative body so I'm just mm -hmm. gonna kill her and they're just like you're, you're what and he's like yeah I'm just gonna kill her and they're <laughs> like oh, oh you know like most of the girls are just like no you can't do that like what gives you the right you know to take their life like yeah they're a vegetable but that doesn't mean you know right. you get to be you know god essentially she did it um, she the girl asked her to well they, but they, no, didn't, no, know they, didn't, they didn't know that yeah. yeah, she she held that. Yeah, but yeah, but in the dream, yeah, uh, Nehru knew that. So, mm -hmm. so good clarification. Um, and then I don't know, like I didn't really enjoy when you know the girls leave, and then I's like, oh, I'm I'm gonna go back, and then she goes back, and then you know her and Nehru have that moment where she's just like, oh, I'm here for you, like you know we can do this together, and then they both push the button. I'm just like, okay, cool. So now you you, you both just killed this person. <laughs> <laughs> like you're you're an accomplice. I like, oh, that's cool. You're there for, you know, your homies that you've known for however much time this series has spanned, but it's like all right. It's all right. It's an anime moment. You just killed you just killed this girl. <laughs> mm. So uh, I, I don't know. With 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 the with the environment that they set up around that that moment, I I think it was fine. Yeah. I yeah, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, oh, we're just going to kill out of, you know, no reason or rationale, but... Yeah, it's um, not like... I guess, I guess that's where the context, it, you know? like you said, of Nehru <laughs> having that moment in the dreamscape with Kotobuki and her just being right. like, hey, you know, you've met all these great friends. Like, yeah, it sucks that I can't be there to share that with you, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's why Kotobuki was happy that Nehru has met, you know, these other people apart from her to, like, experience these new things outside of, you know, this really cold and... um like uh non-empathetical corporate environment so mm. i can agree with that but yeah we definitely uh we opened the can of worms which i think this entire season i was just like all right when are we gonna do it when are we gonna have our our modica <laughs> our modica moment and mm -hmm. we we just reached it <laughs> and they did it with three episodes left yeah <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a clusterfuck i feel like yeah you know, unless hey, they do like a second it's, season it's, or something. it's gonna yeah. look good doing it so yeah, the animation yeah. always stays, you know, beautiful. So, yep. Well, the thing I'm kind of concerned about is the fact that they've gone through the backstories of Rika, I, and Nehru, right? So, technically, to be fair, you have to get some airtime to Momoi and her problems as well. So, that's at least yeah, one so episode. Yeah, she's going to get an way. episode. Yep. Right. So, we have two episodes to kind of wrap everything up. So, if they do a season two, great. If they have a cliffhanger, it's whatever. But yeah, if they try to wrap it all up in these next two to three episodes, uh, it's not looking so hot. So I, I, I'm having mixed feelings about how it's going to end. Yeah. yeah, I think this is the thing that we've seen potentially time over time, especially with anime originals. Is yeah. it does come down to this moment of you know what are the shows that are going to be remembered and get you know the praise versus mm -hmm. what are the shows that are going to be wow you had such a unique concept you really had all the right things going for and then you just crumbled at the finish line. You know you didn't have the little bit of juice left in you to to really right. make a a compelling story come together. Right. Actually, yeah, now that we're talking about that, and if you did compare it to Death Parade, Death Parade did exactly the same thing. It was really focused on all of this human drama. And then near the end, it opens up like a bunch of world building of where they are, why they're there, but just a little bit, just enough to see that there might be like a coup in the making and an evil over. I don't know. For, yeah. I don't give too many spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen <laughs> yeah, it, I guess. So, so we'll see if they, well, they, they wrap it up or if they just leave you with this really philosophical yeah. or like, you know, brain bending like thought of like yeah. oh my god like you know what is this world <laughs> yeah. so we'll see yeah we'll see i'm good yeah all right i think we are so looks like that'll be it for uh for yeah one direct priority move on to our next show good to talk about let's talk about re-zero this week i like how Oof. um 
last week's trend, you were um you were saying, you know, I kinda want to see this more more fights. And well, here you go, sir. You got your two fights know, finally. This, this this season this episode, so the Ram one I didn't really I didn't really care much for, but I mean Wow, I mean, rude. The uh, I mean, well, I mean, at this the, moment, threat is the, no longer because the Garfield one, anyway. that sorry, Garfield one was so fans. much. <laughs> the Garfield one I thought was so much better. I mean, man, when you're throwing, <laughs> when you're decapitating and throwing like hippo bodies, and then basically that's how you die. How can you beat that? <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like when I saw him start picking up the the hippo, I just, I think I just started laughing. I was like, dude, there's no fucking way this is gonna happen. <laughs> And then it happened. I was like, damn, nice. So, and this man is still going on about his hippo. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I love the hippo. Like, <laughs> even even though I met it's terrible, it's a terrible death. Like it was still awesome. I actually pay attention to the, uh, the music this time because I'm trying to fix my bad habit of not remembering soundtracks and so I was actually paying attention this time. So so I don't remember it at all. <laughs> it, I was gonna say I actually didn't remember this episode. I was oh, more in, in well, Threaten's camp of like epic, epic, all the very, acting was was good. <laughs> very orchestrated, very Latin choir. So something except I I liked. Um, but I mean, just basically, just, just the two fights this episode. Um, I I guess we found out that yeah, Melee and Elsa are sisters. I don't know how relevant that is, but. Like that's fine. Yeah. There. Well, well, did we I really Mary, know? It, it's I don't just think like, really sister. Yeah, because Garfield was just like, oh, you know, you're protecting your sister, and then I think even Elsa was like, sister. Like she had that moment hesitation of like, oh yeah, we're sisters. But it's like, oh okay, are they really? But, but yeah. given she Elsa's, was, uh, she but she says she, she was an orphan. Yeah, she? I, I guess yeah. Now that yeah, talk, yeah, there is that. That's confusing. So so maybe sisters of just like orphans in like this, you know, assassination type right. group so group that we the way we thought about. But I guess um, yeah. actually, I I mean, I know we didn't get a whole lot of Elsa's backstory, but I did like kind of the rationale of why she's so fascinated with blood and but, guts and how that eats her warmth in life where. Her life prior to that was just really shitty and you know she had a individual trying to essentially rape her and so she killed him and in, in that regard mm-hmm. um and then sure. more so the fact that uh garfield basically calls out the fact that he realizes that she's a, a vampire based off yeah, her they, regenerative um, abilities because they said like did, she, did they say did she get her powers from a witch or what was I totally forgot about the whole vampire I, thing. Like, yeah, I can't remember what the rationale was for the vampire other than like the fact that Garfield's just beating the shit out of her, like stabbing her through the eye and then she continues to regenerate and he's just like, yeah. oh. oh, I mean, even like what well, took like half her head off or like half her yeah, face, half her face yeah, and yeah, her yeah. head just because of the, the tiger claw. But it's like I almost yeah. felt like with Elsa, like I don't like I think I would have actually preferred it like if we I don't know. Because we didn't really get that much of a backstory with her. We just kind of got like a brief kind of like, it was just like a glimpse. There really mm-hmm. wasn't anything to it. I almost feel like it would have been more like, just like a, like where she, it was almost like a questionable kind of like where she came from type of thing. Where, or if we learned it from her like little sister, if possible, I don't know. But it was yeah. just, it was so small and brief. I almost felt like, what was the point? Because it, uh, it, it gave us no answers with the part of, you know, like showing, like telling us that she was a vampire or she is a vampire. They kind of just said like, "Oh, yeah. you're a vampire," and then it sounds like death. it sounds like <laughs> so, it's gotta be like setting up the fourth shadow for a later season. It's gotta come back, yeah. Even though yeah, like potentially, we, we, we or, still yeah. I guess I'm just okay with it our... in the sense of like, I w- we don't have time to give everybody like this elaborate, <laughs> you know, the, super yeah. backstory. And Elsa, I never really thought of like, oh, I really want to know like why she became an assassin, why she did all of these things. Like she seems pretty like plain jane of a character just like okay you have this assassin that just loves to kill and yeah, we got yeah. all we needed of why yeah. she loves to kill i feel the same way and yeah. she served her purpose but the one question i wanted to know is like when you brought up the vampire i was like wait how the fuck yeah. did that happen like That's it's fair. and but then they're like oh like you know just you know uh typical tragic backstory like we get that from these i mean obviously these characters like uh when, when it's like a villain like that you assume they have a pretty fucked up backstory yeah but the uh, vampire thing it's like first time we heard it okay it's like okay and and then <laughs> right. smash by hippo, and then we're done. Yeah, so, <laughs> moving on. So, so it sounds like it sounds Go like ahead, um dude. like last like how we got like the 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 melancholy guy, and then and now the vampire. Sounds like yeah, there's more witches than just the seven sins. So I'm curious oh, how more that's going. Yeah, I'm curious how yeah, that's all Yeah, lots of there. lots of different classifications of things. Um, and then apart from that, the whole like moment of Subaru, Otto, and and the one younger maid girl like. I just felt like that added nothing to this episode. 
of them fighting like the the Maju dog or whatever, and then you oh, know like using when, the oil and when fire. Subaru, when Subaru's like, oh, let me show you my my modern world like <laughs> knowledge. I've got flex on you, and and just completely goes because wrong. The, the dust explosion, and he's just like, wait, why didn't it explode? When, when they came yeah. with the oil, I was like, what the hell, Subaru? Like you didn't think about oil this whole time. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, then I was more so like, how? how is the oil there in the first place? Like conveniently <laughs> in, you know, the hole in the ceiling. And I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there was like that skip. And when they showed like them first running into the monster versus when they, you know, have that face off with it in like that library esque area. Um, but yeah, that whole part, I was just like, I, I don't care. Like let's, let's focus on other things. And then that's when um, I was glad that we, you know, switched back to uh, Amelia yeah. and her, her beginning of the, uh, the final trial of the future did she finish it i, I can't remember i think so yeah, yeah. she, she finished it yeah. at the end but it yeah because they um, had because it opened up the door to akitna's body and she got rid of the, the oh, barrier yeah. that way so but then when she is, went out the the world was in a com or the forest was in a complete blizzard yeah and it's so, kind of like uh -oh, i mean before the that hell happened though, i want to talk about the future trial where like she saw yep. i guess the, the timeline so i i'm wondering if that's like if that's like a loop that super goes through that like that could happen but it's not gonna happen or if that's actual timeline i don't know there's like a uh, lot i think it'll just i think it was just like endless possibilities was being shown to mm -hmm. her okay i don't think it was like yeah. a specific one and a lot of the possibilities weren't ending up in a good way other than the one that alluded to with subaru and ram or, or rem excuse me yeah. um reaching out as kind of like that that timeline or that that route of salvation of not what? everybody just being dead well, I think the reason why there's so many different possibilities too is because of Subaru. Um, he kind of like determined, you know, he, he basically you know, lives, dies, moves yeah, on no, to like another I, timeline. I, yeah, I totally agree with that. I think he's kind of that key tool that allows those other timelines to yeah. even exist. I'm, yeah. I'm just curious to see like like whatever happens later, if, like if you can trace it back to this moment. So that's what I'm kind of mm. curious about. Yeah. I mean, we could probably he better. It. He better not die. Come back before the fight, because Threaten would be so <laughs> bad. The hippo would oh. never been canon. No, not that and, I know. Oh, so yeah, we, we can't undo what we did. You know, yep. Elsa needs like, to remain just completely squashed by like, I don't, I don't that care at all about that true route. <laughs> like I don't care at all about like the sister Lily, like, uh, like but the hippo. The, just make the hippo canon. And oh, bring yeah. her I, I never hippo. cared about melee or <laughs> Miley or whatever her name. I is. love that hippo. <laughs> Like uh, um, also, I, I was, I was wondering it. too about Akena's body, like in like that one room. So it's like, yeah, the I think, chest or whatever. Because the whole thing about um the legends of Satella was that like she killed all the witches, but like, but then we have I guess like I guess for Akena's story, like I guess like I guess like even though her body is like there, I guess I guess she made the barrier, and maybe and then I guess her mind, her her consciousness is like in like. The three trials that's why it's like been up this whole time so i'm just curious like, what's gonna happen? No <laughs> i'm just curious what's happening to her then if they get rid of the barrier like is she coming back alive or is she, yeah like, what's going on with the body that's one, that's one part i didn't like when amelia just goes and she's just like oh so this is the barrier and she's like oh this is where you know i diffuse it and like touches it and breaks and it and right doesn't even think about like oh hey here's a kidna like you know here's her body and stuff and just walks away and is like, yeah. okay, let me go see what's going on with the <laughs> that, sanctuary. I, I, and it's like, like that either. Uh, excuse me. You, you got like a kidna me. back there. Yeah. Like, is she alive? Is she dead? <laughs> like, um, but I did, I did enjoy the interaction um, after Amelia sees all those potential futures. And then she's, you know, taken to uh, a kidna's tea garden and she has the interaction with, um, I believe it's Minerva, Minerva yeah. is the witch. The witch of mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, and so I, I like that instance where, Again, with a lot of these witches and what they know of Amelia's mother, they don't really expect, you know, good things of her. And it always is kind of, I mean, it's kind of cliche in the sense of now it's Amelia, you know, having all of this confidence and faith in kind of the companions that she goes with that now she can kind of go against the grain. Um, but I, I really enjoyed, I think even, David, you said, you know, in, in the earlier season when we got to see all these different witches, like, I was glad that we, again, you know, yeah, go back to still, them. Like, they're, they're still really like great characters. Of the show, yeah. I'm like, it's like, like they're, the, their characters and, and their, how important they are to the lore is like still my favorite part of the show. So I'm just really exactly. curious, like, what's, what's with, like, yeah, Fortuna and, like, and, and what is with, like, Minerva and why, like, her message to Amelia. I'm, I really want to know, like, what is all this about? Yeah, this this episode was again uh, giving us more questions and no answers. <laughs> That's what we love, boys. <laughs> I, 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 I got my yeah. witches, so I'm satisfied. But so, but I know, uh, I know, Taylor, you uh, during it took a bunch of notes. Would you like to go over some of those notes? 
No. No. Right. no. I, I, I'm just, you know, I, I have the same opinion that I've had the entire time, which is, yes, I love the characters and I love lore. I just don't like how they're telling it. It's super confusing. So I don't appreciate any single thing that happens on the screen at any time. <laughs> I, I, just, I, just, I, I just, I just, oh my gosh, I get so mad. <laughs> I think I'd be yeah. losing my mind if I was watching this show and Higurashi. <laughs> Where we're not getting like any hands, there's more questions. It's just like, oh, oh my god, you have no well, idea. Well, my no patience idea. would be extremely thin. Well, it's again with like Elsa. Like it's basically it's like they give us like a garbage like little backstory clip of like a you know like a typical her her backstory, and then they drop the vampire bomb, and then they kill her off, and it's just like okay, maybe we'll get an answer I, later on. I think they gave you just enough to figure out what was going on or why she is the way she is. Yeah. Minus the, I mean, the whole vampirism, kinda, I think we've yeah. hit the nail on the head with the vampirism. Yeah. That was just yeah. a quick like. Okay, yeah. cool. That's why she can regenerate. I think we could, you know, continue to say like, okay, well, how? Like, you know, give yeah, us more it, there. But we figured. But anyway, again, I think I think what we've all said we've got bigger things. To, yeah, you know, bigger fish to fry. Yeah, that was will, more of, so. a, of an example of just like another question that's basically out there now, and just not, not getting yeah, a response. Definitely. We also, not we also got uh, Ram and Brazo. This one I, I didn't really care much about either. I, I don't understand right, I Ram's <laughs> reasoning say, yeah. why she still loves Brazo. But like, yeah. So. Well, because a lot of it, I know Taylor, you brought up the the point is like, you know, what the hell, like, because we know that, like, we know that Roswell, like, attacked their village, but why? Yeah. Like, we don't know that answer. We don't know why. Why did uh, he attack the village? Why did he take her? Why, like, why is he even, like, raising her with him? Like, how does he feel about her? How does she really feel about him? Does she actually love him? Like, she says she did. Oh, okay, that was dumb. I, I, mean, was, oh. I have so many questions. <laughs> Oh. To be fair, I will use the best plot device that the show has given us so far is that he probably followed that in the, uh, the book. book of wisdom that he received from uh, Echidna. So that probably told him like, he's, hey, go he's you right. know, fuck up this he village, get help. these girls. He just can't help but simp for his girl, man. Exactly. That's that's the biggest thing we've learned about Roswell. Roswell is the number one simp. 400 you got years. The, that only fans, he's keeping that thing floating for, for <laughs> forever and ever years. and ever. So. I really thought, like, when she like when she said, like, oh, I love you, I thought, oh, my God, why, Ram? Like, why, why do you got to do this? Like, oh, is she not your favorite girl no more? Oh, God. I was actually kind of happy because I find that at least more interesting than, I, like, I was worried they were going to set her up as, like, a potential partner for Garfield because he has a crush on her. I was nervous. I don't know. I can't. Yeah. I don't have to read on this show at all. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad they didn't go down the Garfield route because I was just like, oh, man, like, but, <laughs> I don't but Garfield is really like, the best, like. Garfield, in his own sense, is an equal simp, but you know, there's not a <laughs> well, he's so much whoa, better. Whoa, he's whoa, so much whoa. better. Let's not go down that road, sir. <laughs> All right. I mean, hey, man, a spade's a spade at the end of the day, but <laughs> he hasn't um, been simping for hundreds of years yet, though. So, dude, he's really, 14, he's just right? trash. Let, let, let him, yeah, but yeah, enjoy his first at least yeah. with, with no, Roswell, like you both said, Roswell's been doing this for 400 <laughs> years. No, like, that is you true. can't even call Garfield a simp for, for, uh, uh, for Rand because he's actually killed her before. And one of those uh, timelines. Oh, shit, that's right. True. Right. So yeah, it's, not like, it's not like it's not like he won't do. It's not like he's gonna I'm, do I'm, everything I'm, for it. But I'm take my know, foot. He, I'm gonna put it in my mouth right now. That's right. <laughs> Don't you dare call a man Garfield a simp. Right. This man's a legend. He killed uh, a vampire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he killed a vampire. You use a hippo. I mean, he's he's only 14 he's got all these like crazy potential like he's a man of his word like I mean, don't get me wrong he's a badass and i can chalk it up to that he is only what 14 14 so. he's only 14 right yeah right. he's only a boy he's he's and a wee lad in, in this he, world he doesn't where... know anything yeah. <laughs> roswell yeah. is a kill? 400 year old a man yeah. that you know doesn't age and looks man like baby fun. how yeah. old are ram and rem then Oh, no. uh, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know how fast they're, they're they demons, age. so I assume I they're demons. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't think they're like super, super old, but I mean, for convenience I, I sake, I'd so. imagine they're teenagers as well as Subaru. Probably yeah. that, that would, that would fit what, the uh, the wife. That's what cool. I think. Um, yeah. No, I enjoyed it though, and, and and to the point, the only moment that I did notice the OST for uh, this week's episode was with the final engagements between Ram yeah, and uh, Roswell. Yeah. yeah, in the ending. Oh, and then like they did show um, that how like uh Roswell he interviewed with um with uh Amelia and Puck. Like so I think he was the reason why like I guess like something to do with like their contract, like that's why they had to take Puck off, is because mm -hmm. he interfered. So that was that was, that answered one question of uh, maybe Yeah, a nice little tidbit. Um mm. And then, yeah, I think as far as, again, that ending kind of conflict goes, I, I loved Puck's, you know, fake out of pretending to shift back Damn, to, like, his great <laughs> otherworldly being. And Roswell's like, oh, shit. And then it's, you know, of course, Puck in comedic fashion just like, oh, I just got bigger. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and they're just like, oh, god damn it. Again, Puck um, is an awesome character, too. Yeah, Puck yeah. is great. He is definitely um, a good outlet of sorts in that yeah. regard. Um, oh, and then, yeah, the whole ending with, with Roswell and Ram at the end when, you know, Ram fakes him out equally as well to destroy this book. And then Roswell just has this flashback. So I'm like, no, that's the only thing my, my you know, the, the <laughs> girl that I simp for gave oh, to me. God. So <laughs> I, like, know, I, it, like, it's basically like Ram canceled all his subscriptions to, to only fans <laughs> and everything that Roswell ever had with the kid. And now he's just <laughs> It's for the, what does it's, he have left? It, yeah. it's, it's for the it's for the good, all for the better. Exactly. Well, yeah. How was that the end of doing it? Doing this out of love. Yeah. How we how we like how they showed the end of it though? They basically it looked like they he blew everything up though. Yeah. Rip Ram. Yeah. So that's Holy you know shit. now yeah we got to see what the state Ram is in and then furthermore you know now that um, I'm interested to see because it looked like where Roswell and them all were the blizzard hadn't yet taken effect so I'm sure there's a little yeah. bit of a time difference from Amelia coming out of well, the trial. Where, um, where, where were the bunnies? Like, I'm pretty sure there's one of these places. That's what I was going to gonna bring it are. up. Exactly. The only time we've known that that great blizzard comes into play is when these bunnies, the bunnies are, you know, yeah. doing their thing. So I thought that's no, no, it's actually it's, it's actually the bunnies. The bunnies are attracted to a large source of mana. Oh, God. So right yeah. there, then. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, whoever summoned that blizzard was using a large amount of mana. That's what they're attracted to. True. I'm, I'm oh, OK. Yeah. I'm, I'm confused how the blizzard was summoning because I thought Roswell the reason why he was at the crystal with um, Yuzu is because he wanted to use her man to summon the blizzard. So, I, I thought okay, it, yeah, that's a good point. Was... What the hell? What the hell happened with Ryuzu and the crystal? You know, one moment Ram and uh, or Ram and uh, Roswell are fighting in front of the crystal, and then now they're out in the forest. It's like, like I assume she lured him out of there, but then like I don't know, like how I guess, the blizzard. Yeah. That, that, that's the only thing I can see for blizzard. But I don't know how like you would. I mean, that's how I say like how they can get them out of that, the area where the crystal is. But I don't know how you summon the blizzard unless Roswell just goes back in there, summons it. I mean, I think the I, blizzard was just like an after effect of like back in the day with Amelia. I, and then I don't know no, if no, it somehow uh, got like put on pause. In, or it could be with Puck because he was using his power. So, maybe it could oh, be with do Puck, you think it's but now yeah. with Puck? Because like David said that, you know, yeah. Roswell basically told him that he fucked with the contract and now Puck's just going full beast mode. Right. Because as of right now, for the yeah. timeline of when was... Amelia popped out of the trial and when they're fighting, we don't know exactly what that timeline is. But, but, so but it Puck... could have been right after, like, she got out. Right when they were fighting, I guess. But well, the thing is, the puck didn't turn into like his beast form, though. Yeah, he just he, stayed in the he, kitten form. He did like, it, but he did use a lot of power to like shoot those giant icebergs. Well, or I think spear. a big part of it though is like when he turns into the beast. I think yeah. that's like when it started. Mm. And he, yeah. he knew that. Do you yeah. think then potentially? Yeah, I don't know. Because season one, like that's all the confusing, time, dude. <laughs> this, when he only talked in season one, when he summoned the blizzards at the mansion, it's because he was his, his giant form. Yep. So. Oh, was that because Amelia was dead, or I can't remember yeah. what was the exact? Yeah. Went off. yeah. So I don't know. I don't foresee anything happening to Amelia. I mean, I guess that's the only thing from what we've seen so far. That would be the only reason he would kind of go full beast mode, for lack of a better word. Right. Um, or do we think it's even something that like Roswell may have just like completely fucked up Ram, and then not that Puck and Ram have that much connection, but maybe it's kind of similar in that instance of Puck just being like, you know, fed up with things. And I don't just know. Maybe we'll that. see next week. So. Yeah, yeah right i mean we only have see. what is it two more episodes there's just one more episode or i don't well uh, i was trying I to look because the way that they two. like two. showed two. the ending two. okay yeah. Yeah. i almost felt like this was like a season finale like in a weird sense i was just like oh my god like, close yeah I, had to check. I was like yeah. i was like wait is this a season finale <laughs> like did i miss something because it kept like going till the end and it was doing like you know different credits and everything and i'm just like wait we there, there's more right like this is this ain't the end <laughs> so I'll I'll just 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 re zero things yeah, basically leaving um, us on a clear yeah. cliffhanger at the end of the season as well. But so. anyway, it's absolutely confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's not confusing. You just gotta piece it together, and it kind of. Oh, makes... But we need the answers to piece but, it together. Yeah. But I do give you credit, Koo. There are things that I admittedly forget about, so I need to do a better job of uh, getting my facts straight with things that were being dropped. It's just there's a lot, man. It's yeah. tough. <laughs> so yeah. tough. Yeah. All right. That's all I got. I think we're ending it for ReZero. We'll move on to our next show then. <laughs> More questions. Yes. Yeah. So next show, we'll talk about Dr. Stone. And I know we have a lot of things to say. Oh, man. I'll, I'll let you guys talk about it first because so. I don't want to go back-to-back -back rant modes because I got to rant for Dr. Stone. <laughs> oh, God. So to be fair, with Dr. Stone, I didn't see this ending. <laughs> it oh, was right? kind of... Uh, no, I mean, I, it's like how, like how, like the the war was resolved. Didn't see that. Like, I, I didn't like actually see. And I 
again, hate this ending because Tsukasa's still alive. But it's, uh, God, it was, uh, I don't know. It's, it's like when they went over, like, kind of like, uh, Tsukasa's goals, like a little bit of more like what he was doing. Like, mm-hmm. where, he, where he's, you know, he's kind of like taking on like the power of God, and, like basically who lives, who dies in a sense. When he's just like, oh, like where he's trying to get like his like whole, like, uh, was it? not a wholesome world. But yet the people he's reviving, it's basically just like eight, like just like fucking eighteen year old thugs. <laughs> or what they look like. It's just like, man, how is this? How is this like part of your world? Um, and I put a note for ridiculous powers, but I don't even remember what I was talking about now. I just, <laughs> I, just I don't know the whole the whole explanation for his casa, like the whole like transition from like trying to save his little sister to then like yeah trying to. to take on the weight of like trying to decide who lives or I, I don't know just that thing like i just i didn't i didn't feel like i didn't like i didn't buy the show's like explanation for that just it didn't really feel like a, a good way to justify his like his actions for trying to be the villain i don't know hmm. right yeah like, i don't know that, that whole I, thing i think, was I think justin Bill which i'll explain i will later but like that was like my main thing it's like i don't know like this... so you don't think his like intentions are sincere is that what you're saying? It's, it's, it it's terrible, really especially what we found out. It felt really weird that, like, the whole, like, they bring up, like, he really wants to save his sister, but then, like, he does this whole thing of trying to be the villain here and trying to, like, decide. Like, like the backstory didn't, didn't really explain why he hated adults so much, or it just said, like, oh, like, uh, someone has to choose, and I'm just going to be the one that bears, bears the weight. But No, he, he, he kind of explained it, right? Because, like you mentioned, in the Stone World, and, again, he's just a high schooler, he's not that smart even though he seems to be able to counter senku whatever he thinks of like he's trying to make sure that whoever is resurrected like there's enough resources for everybody right because it's a stone world it's gonna be hard to get the uh like like what like the world back in the state that it was before right and then uh, like well the thing that doesn't make sense is like how did senku knew that uh like tsukasa had a sister uh that was kind of out of nowhere yeah, but too, yeah. uh <laughs> And like I mentioned before, Tsukasa, he wasn't really a bad guy. He was basically the Thanos of the right? He wants to make sure that only the people who deserve to live are revived and that there's enough resources for everyone. Sir, and Thanos if, was random. Mm, eh, whatever. I don't think it was random, but... <laughs> it was a snap. It was a snap and basically just let, you know, RNG decide. But he didn't have to go through all that, did he, sir? He didn't Thanos, have to he, kill half the universe. No, no, continue. Right. We're fine. <laughs> But like, like in a sense, he did have his own like sense of justice, right? Like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't seem like he's really a bad guy because he does kind of like, uh, like he's saddened by the fact that his comrades uh, died. You know, he remembers their names, and like even he has sentiments of like being best friends with Senku when he was about to kill him back in season one. So, yeah, uh, yeah he had his own sense of justice. Uh, I felt like he was kind of sincere and he was just going through with it with the way that he knew how. And like he says, some people like they're not willing to uh, take that responsibility. So he just took it in his own hands to make sure that uh, like the world is savable and that there's enough resources for everybody. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The whole system thing was just fucking out of nowhere. So. Yeah, that was completely out of nowhere as well. Yeah. Um, there was like a part of where I thought like when um God when uh when he hit the spear like on the, like the that dome ringing thing, but like there was like mm-hmm. no kind of like backfire. When you know, like, I mean, if, if, uh, I mean, it was kind of just like a minor little, little, little pick, but it, when he, um, you know, because when he previously, when, uh, the guy screamed in it and basically made like that crazy noise, like, you know, once like that spear connected with that thing, like, if, you know, with the logic of the show that's kind of going with it, that would, that would have been insanely loud. It would have been just like, it would have been just like crazy, like backfire almost. But it's, uh, I mean, that was like just kind of like a little nitpick that I had, but my favorite part was by far the dynamite. Um, just like when Senku came up with uh, with the dynamite, I thought that was actually really cool. Uh, that was a, uh, but I think that was a kind of like really the only strong part to the show, because when it was basically kind of final, where uh, we all of a sudden just kind of get like this thing dropped with his sister, and um, they somehow find her, <laughs> just like that, and just kind of like the ceasefires with this guy. I thought like, oh my god, is this really gonna be the one like the, the thing that decides it? Even though we kind of got like a little bit of glimpses with Hyoga, where he seems like, if anything, he, he'll be the future villain. Um, or he, uh, even though he he seemed like he like really enjoyed the the dynamite. Um, yeah, and I he, mean, I think it's 
Go ahead. That's, yeah. I got really nothing else. I think it's fair to, to think that Sukasa is equally still potentially a, a villain character because he even says at the end, like, hey, Senku, remember, like, this is nothing but a truce. Like, you have something that I want, and, you know, I have... Well, I don't really know what Sukasa has at this point other than, like, he can just beat the hell out of everybody. <laughs> right, yeah. um, but, no, I, I I totally agree in the sense of, like, the dynamite part, making the nitroglycerin, like, that's all cool. That's things that we've said time and time again, like, this show does really well of bringing the science together and, you know, putting together these different um, evolved evolvements in, like, technology and stuff. But in terms of Sukasa's like, complete 180 and the back lore of a sister, and I, I think they did admittedly talk about the sister in the beginning when he was, like, you know, combing the beach for these seashells and stuff. Um, but, oh, man, like, it was such a cop out for you know okay <laughs> this is how we solve it's very shonen and i get it it's a it's a shonen show like it's, fair. it's just within that realm of things it yeah. definitely could have been better i still like my theory of them somehow like immobilizing him in stone but um that's neither here nor there um but to your point threatened when they you know set the truce and then they have the dynamite and then it's just very conveniently of like Sukasa like oh yeah I know exactly where my sister is like the, the <laughs> hospital was over here like y'all got dynamite like all right let's just start blowing shit up and yeah. then you know the whole time they're like okay we can't kill anybody like death is bad we want to you know um save as much of humanity as we can here um and then you know when they do talk about like oh if we blow somebody up like use the rehawk and just put them back together yeah. and it's like that's such a like where the show started and with you know Sukasa beating these statues into pieces and them making us believe that oh they're dead and then they're yeah. just completely pulling a shonen you know process of oh we thought they were dead but they're not really dead because we can super glue them back together no matter wh how many pieces they're in so it's just like yeah it's frustrating and I get it it's it's thinking to you know it's over analyzing at the end of the day but I can't help but but do that when it's just well, like man uh, this is where i say like this the shonen trolls man like this i don't know like you could have like had a cool science show without the shonen tropes is what i've been saying for the show like so no I, I i i totally agree and then just the last fact of you know with one they just happen to know where the hospital with and it just so happens that after you know four or five explosions they perfectly dig into where without the sister her. Is cause, yeah, without blowing her up, you know, she's perfectly in one piece, and then it's all just like, yay, we're all friends at the end of the day. Like, we did it. And yeah. so now it's just like, to your point, like, right? Like, I don't know who is who is going to be the antagonist now. You know, is it going to be Hyogo? Is it going to still be Sukasa? And now that once his sister is brought back to life, or I don't know. Part of me is just like, man, it's it's tough to keep going with the overarching the, plot it's only the science that would keep me but it's like is that yeah. worth yeah. sitting I you mean, know like, 20 minutes each week yeah, yeah. i guess i mean uh, i mean to your point just it's like the main thing is just like we still got like it's we still got carry one of the stone and we still got you no know, backstory of that it's just like it just feels so sidetracked from the whole sakasa thing so if it was like you know if it was just them trying to figure out the science like trying to figure out what happened i, I don't know maybe you can go back to that like have, instead of just having just like a, a person as like a villain yeah uh, it just really sucks that when the season's title is the stone war and you're you know <laughs> being led into this thought of like okay this is going to all accumulate into a sto a war and then now at the very end it's like oh hey uh you know kumbaya we'll save sister uh okay we got the you know miracle fluid back that we can bring back more people to life cool power of friendship yeah let's go right <laughs> so yeah it's i don't know i i, I can I can see how, like, you know, like, after like, he gets his sister and then Tsukasa kind of almost goes, like, his own separate way. Kind of, like, just goes, does his own thing. Or I, I still feel like, you know, Hyoga could easily just, you know, backstab this guy and then just become, like, the new future villain. But I, I kind of hope they don't do that, though. I just want to see, like, the, like, the, like, the, the, the overall kind of, like, arc or, like, what's going to happen, like, and, like, why originally everybody turned to stone. Like, I really don't want any more, like, these really just terribly done, like, um, battles or fights. Mm -hmm. We also didn't mention that the bow that the bow guy survived. <laughs> oh, uh, you kill. Yeah, after he was blown, yeah. dude. There was a there was a screenshot that I, I or that I, I almost just want to like send you guys where it just showed like this giant picture of like the cave, but just randomly in the corner was him just bleeding out in the corner, and yeah. I just thought like, do we need like him in that shot? Like there was absolutely no reason for him. That was like last week's yeah. episode. Yeah, but that was, was, no, no, it was, it was this one too. Oh, was it was it basically okay. when they were was yeah it? when they were it's going just, to it's it. It's really funny. Like just like because <laughs> I I know you're supposed to pay attention to like to them talking. I, I just focus on you <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't do it. Is someone gonna help it's, this man? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that was that was funny. Yeah, when he just all of a sudden stands up and it's like, bro, you were you were bleeding out last episode. Like, <laughs> yeah. how did you just? How are you here? Yeah, how did you get your spear wrapped in the nitroglycerin? You know, paper. The only good thing that. Like, yeah, the only th- good thing that came with like him just kind of like sitting there bleeding out is we thought like maybe he'd be dead, so that could kind of bypass the whole thing. Like nobody can die thing, so we thought okay maybe there's a chance Sukasa or and or somebody else can die. And then when I saw him get up with the bow, I was like, oh god, okay, we're gonna see no death. Yeah, unless then... you're a, a lackey, you can't die. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like the <laughs> uber a, uber lackey for the explanation of science. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's but I don't know. Yeah, anyway. Uh, uh, well, the one, I'm glad that this is actually kind of wrapping up and it's coming to an end. I just really hope that like the next like arc they decide to do isn't anything like this yeah. again, because by far Sukasa was the worst part of this, and he was a big focus in it. Wow, that's so rude. Yeah, right. I think that that's the one thing, like you said, like whatever the <laughs> new kind of driving plot device ends up being, that's definitely going to dictate whether or not I'm going to continue with the show. Let's just yeah. go back to basics, man. Let's figure out like what why everyone turned to stone. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. make the civilization. Build this place. Fuck, fuck these stupid so, yeah, If they do that, that would be cool. I just don't want it yeah. to be like, oh, there's now this new evil that's arisen, but with Shonen, you know, it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only other thing I was going to mention is like how, because they also pretty li- they lied to a bunch of Sukasa's people, how like the U.S. military is coming to save them. So what are they, what are they gonna do? like? <laughs> how else we gonna, how else we gonna handle like like oh well, you've been lied to this whole time like are they just gonna save Sukasa like? Oh, know. they're gonna blow over it. I think I think they're already over yeah. it now. They kind of like mentioned it, like what they're lying, and then they kind of just moved on. Yep. And then I don't think they're gonna come back okay. to it. Yeah, I think it's basically over. Okay. There, the, the people of the Sukasa uh, decides to um, <laughs> revive. Don't have like the greatest. Uh, th- their IQ isn't that high. Um, as long as they're young, that's that's all the criteria. Yeah. He their needed, IQ you know? and their yeah. loyalty as long, is just so flip flop. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're young, but you look like you're in your mid twenties, you're good to go. You're fine. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't I'm, know I'm finally saying. actually, yeah, I'm finally like wanting to see like what happens. Like I'm like just finally done with this stuff. It sucks that we're gonna get a lot of Sukasa. Um, I prefer him not to be. Well, what do you guys think? Like if he ends up like joining them in some way, where you know, because because it sounds like, like they don't know how to revive her yet. I don't know. I just because like it sounds like they want to. That's gotta go. I don't unless you just gotta have him like just be in the background like for the rest until a later arc. I don't know. Like yeah, because it sounds like. Uh, basically, I mean, they still have to revive her, like without like the veg- like the vegetative state, vegetative state. Yeah, um, I think they're just planning to revive her and hope that that cures whatever disease she had. I don't know. It almost it. it hmm. No, yeah, because, I think like, that's right. Because like, they, like Taiju mentioned, it could be, like, yeah. when, when Senku was killed, he was yeah. revived once they, you know, like, yeah, restored like the piece of his oh neck God. or whatever. They made this. They made this even so much more worse for me because fucking like Sukasa could just destroy the earth if he wanted to. And how, how if they just waited for like the fucking dynamite? He knew exactly where she was. Like, what the hell was the point of waiting to this point for dynamite? Oh my god, guys, <laughs> right. we shouldn't discuss this show anymore. I just hate this even more. <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're taking too much into it. Just, just enjoy the show, sir. <laughs> Dude, yeah, just, that's just the thing. It's like if they try to bring up a larger plot element again that's <sighs> going to span a full season or more. It's kind of like, all right, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah. So I only have myself right. to blame if I let this happen again. So I'll just have to see where it goes. <laughs> I will I will stay with the mindset that when Sukasa is gone, that this show will improve drastically. I'm gonna hope and I'm gonna hope that that's the case. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I got nothing else. Already then. Yeah, we'll see how bad this show gets after this episode. Or where this oh goes to. Okay. I'm gonna still hope that, that we go back to science, man. I wanna see. I want to see more of the dynamite airplanes okay, or right. paper airplanes. Yeah, You're okay so. with that, but not okay with the other stuff. Uh, dude, that was awesome. Like, I thought it was but, so does it, cool. but does it make sense? Sir? I don't even care. Like it sounded, it sounded epic. <laughs> sounded kind of biased to me. Oh, uh, I don't know. All right. Where's that in here? Good Dr. Move. Stone. <laughs> Good, move. Right, Good move. Move on to our next show. We're going to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen. Yes. Brian, I just dragged you in chat. I hope you watched Jujutsu. Yeah, hey man. Ooh, the, ooh, the, yeah, welcome back, man. We missed you last week. Yes. Yes. Um. Yeah. Um, yeah. So starting off Jujutsu Kaisen, um, I guess going to the new arc. I'm surprised how much like how like how much detail or how important this new arc is because we don't have that much episodes left in the season. So I thought it'd be just a small thing, mm-hmm. but we're we're digging right into like like maybe his backstory and to like something 
series and and um the and all this episode we had uh we had uh Mahito like he 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 put that one curse thing and that guy was that the thing he stole from uh Jujutsu Tai last week or yep I believe, okay. so, I believe so, right? so yeah. okay yeah, I thought I was thinking but I wasn't sure but yeah so we're already getting to that right away so oh I, I just thought he stole another finger no he <laughs> stole he stole a finger no. and the the three um oh. Like said, special I, I, grade I curses. I was, oh, the curse I parts. Yeah, I thought it was paintings, I, I, but I guess it's I something else. Stole, I thought he stole six fingers and three of those containers. It was yeah. six fingers? Was it that many? I think it was six fingers. Holy shit. Well, regardless, we'll, we'll have to get a fact check on yeah. that. But right, yeah. right. Long Andy. story short, he, he <laughs> stole some shit. He stole some fingers. Like, he stole yeah. some cursed we're, bodies we're like, in We're vile. going yeah, straight into the next the next arc, like into yeah, yeah. into Megan's backstory. So I'm surprised how, how serious this is all getting right away after that baseball like, game. So. Like right right before this, <laughs> I, I told Taylor, I was like, man, I was like, I just don't care about Becky Bean at all. This way, because wow. like we knew wow. nothing. We knew that Wait, only because we knew like nothing about him. Because we knew nothing about him. And then yes. there's what's up, Justin? Sorry, no, nothing. Continue. Oh. <laughs> I'm just no, memeing over here. Yeah, I know. I was just saying because because again, it was because we knew nothing about his, like him or his backstory, and now we're starting to get his backstory. I was like, well, of course. And so I'm sure that'll end up changing, but it was more of like just because I knew nothing about this guy. Dude, uh, dude, just, like, I didn't hate him. I just didn't know really anything about him. Ah, uh, man, like he's he's only you know more, especially why like why Sakuna is so interested in him. That's but we did more. That was enough for me. Oh my God, we did find more facts. I'm ready, for, I'm ready for a fact check if you guys are ready for it. Go for it. Oh, yeah. uh, sure. uh, he was able to steal the six Sukuno's fingers as well as the death painting rooms numbers one through three. Okay. Ah, so, okay. Uh, Jeez, so then go. the things yeah. that he used must have been something different to um, transform the guy. Um, no, I, th- I think I think no, those were the paintings or whatever that she's talking about. The three things. Says three the, the curse, the curse wombs. So. Fact checking. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, no Brian, worries. Since we we didn't get you last week, uh, your thoughts on currently what's going on now, and also the baseball episode. Baseball Real quick. episode lit. Uh, <laughs> uh, everybody just hates my man for no reason. Cause wait, who? Just... Toto. Toto. Right? Yeah. Oh right, right. Like, it was a baseball game. He just gets drilled in the <laughs> face like nice pitch. I'm like, damn y'all. <laughs> no, I, I like him as much as the next guy, but you know there was reasons. Okay, there's reasons why they don't like him. Let's be let's be real now. All right, nah, dude, that that man's a saint. Okay, <laughs> I feel like if anything, that makes the affection stronger for him as a viewer. Yeah, true. Probably, so. yeah, yeah. It's no, um, and of course, I think we all thought it was filler, and then we found out it's not actually filler. It's well, I didn't think it was filler. And then they, well, oh, that's ma- maybe, maybe we could clarify where it's not like filler, filler just to you know filler right to action, give them more time what, to like do other stuff, but when, when, when right. mean, it wasn't mean progressively that. moving forward the yeah. story. Yeah. Right, right, that's what we mean, Justin. Say um, filler, I guess. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, Brian, if you wanted to give any kind of like more thoughts on this episode, um, I I just enjoy like the the little the little heartwarming moment that like everyone had with Megumi. Like he was like, because they don't know anything about him either. Yeah. And then at the very end, when he was like finally opening up to his friends, as Yuji said it, and then he was like, "Yeah, my my sister's still bedridden, and you know she can't like." And then I was confused of like how the sister was also impacted by that curse, but then, as Sren just said, you know she was in a coma for a little bit so like was there a gap between when megumi went to call his sister to try to get like the bodyguards and stuff to when then she's now in a coma uh i, I don't like kind of disjointed like i didn't he didn't call his sister he i don't called, think um, he, he didn't call his sister know? he called yeah. he called like the one secretary dude. yeah yeah oh okay he called him yeah, to call for the bot bodyguard yeah he didn't call his sister yeah yeah okay but yeah. now that she's he... been a vegetable the whole time sir yeah <laughs> pretty much <laughs> Okay, so that's what it was, and then she's just been a vegetable for like a long time, and now it's like they he knows the reason why she's a vegetable is because of this curse. Because the, or, or the... I, I don't I don't Almost. think it was the cause of why yeah. she's that way, but the fact that she's tied to this curse that gets you within like a certain time frame. He's worried because she's a vegetable and she can't get right, away. She can't defend herself, herself, right? She, okay, so, okay, okay. Yeah. that makes sense. I think that's where I was confused. Of like, I didn't know how long she was in this vegetative state because you know she had like right. the like mark on her forehead yeah. and stuff, and I was just like. Wait, when when did that come into play and stuff? But I guess it ties more to you guys' points of like we really don't know much about Megumi and his his yeah. backstory. But yep. I mean, to clarify more, it's like um because uh 
because she went to the the, the bridge with that classmate, mm-hmm. and they're saying like, oh, because the classmate starts seeing, she started getting infected, like last week, and and so they're saying now like there's also there might be a time limit on the sister because they were at the same time, so that's why they're more worried that the curse will go for two. But if they went together only like one week then only, hasn't the sister only been in a coma for a week no no no, no the, oh, they went so... back then back then like they went mm-hmm. but then um it was only recently right now that the sister start that the, the classmates are seeing um the door open mm-hmm. and that's what happened for a week and they're saying oh it just takes two weeks for the curse to activate so now they're worried that when it activates for the class i, I, I got it now the sister yeah Thanks yeah, for clarifying. Guy, yeah. This guy just doesn't want people entering it like in apartment buildings. I mean, you basically yeah, just get angry and just get stabbed up. So I, I think he doesn't like... want them entering. He always leaves the door open, so he wants you to go in for some reason. Yeah, he's like, please come yeah, in. He to... wants you to go in to only get stopped my... by the next door and then get stabbed. Please come into my domain of death, <laughs> yes, or I will decapitate and do whatever I do to you. I, do yeah. I, forgot, I forgot how dark this show was because like, we had the, the tournament arc where it was all the jujitsu's fighting. Uh, the, the sorcerer's fighting, so we didn't have to worry as much. But I find that people die in this show. We had like we had four yeah. deaths already, <laughs> and then like I forgot how dirty person, they yeah. did the the one friend of Yuji's mom yeah, that they planted like the finger <laughs> yeah. on or whatever, yeah. Yeah. and then oh, the, yeah. the monster yeah. showed up and ate his mom. Mm-hmm. I totally yeah. forgot about that. Like, I'm pretty sure yeah. it was pretty gruesome. Like he ate like the mom's lower half. Lower or half. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Wait, so, no, directly to your point. No, he ate the lower. It was the lower half. Yeah. Okay. So. So but again, let's be yeah. fair, you know, Total like Total just makes you forget all the bad stuff. Once you see yeah, Total, exactly. all you see is the bright <laughs> light, all the happiness. And, yeah, right. Yeah. Total sure little things that things are gonna be okay. About the good times, you know, that Total does that, you know. To- so. It was a Total's little thing where his like little story about how like they went to God, what the hell was a baseball story? And then uh, it was basically you yeah, how they won nationals. Oh, yeah. how they yeah. won the nationals in middle school, but you denies it. You denies all claims. Yeah. Yeah, so then do really quick is okay. that that thing that they fed that guy was indeed the one of the curse room painting things. Awesome. Yep. So, yeah. Confirmed. So, yeah. Okay. So the only so I think the next episode think... should be pretty hyped then, right? Yeah, it looks like we're gonna get a lot of combat. So yeah, because we had because it's the curse plus that the the curse the curse um, womb guy that from the beginning. Yeah, so who, who is a special grade? So it's going to be a special grade versus Yuji, while the other two they're going to fight against the one that's uh, 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 that's causing like all the deaths or whatever. Yeah. So it's going to be like a showcasing of Yuji's uh, level up, I guess, like his training arc. So we're going to see another Black Flash, even though like hopefully something more, something mm-hmm. I guess original or unique. Do you think we're going to get a Sakuna moment? This will be the time to do it. Like. It is a special grade, uh, uh, special class, special grade class now. So he has to pull all his thoughts, I think. Yeah, and he doesn't have his his main brother Toto to you know. No Toto, no Gojo, no Gojo yeah. either. Yeah, I think that was the thing. I think even you know uh, Megami had called that out, where he's just like, "Oh man, like this is the worst possible time. Like Gojo's not here and all that stuff." And it's just like, "Yeah, like mm-hmm. what are you gonna do when you don't have Gojo and you don't have Toto? Like you're two kind of like." plot armor beast <laughs> so yeah so. but it's good for them from a from a character development standpoint yeah so it was interesting to see how it'll go i'm interested to see how they'll resolve this because we don't have that many episodes so i guess maybe it'll just be a fight and maybe they'll leave it for whatever next season i don't know no i yeah. feel like they would have to finish it if they left it out like as a cliffhanger that'll be kind of disappointing. no i mean like i could see them like maybe like finishing like the curse and like the the special grade but then like the whole thing of like uh, whatever whatever my he told was trying to do like maybe they don't explain that this this season yeah that's what that's what i'm thinking they'll finish the fight and then there will be some new information that we learn either from gojo and the, the jujitsu sorcerers or from the uh main curse user group of like their next big attack mm-hmm. well didn't they say that they were going to do sorry to cut you off friend but i was just remembering didn't um ghetto the leader of the curse users say they were going to like stage an attack on halloween yeah, yeah, they did yep. say that. Yep. Yeah, and so that where are they right now? Yet. Like, what's the time? I don't, I don't think we know. No remember. idea. <laughs> but I just, I just remembered that now that that was something yeah, that he Halloween. did mention. So that's probably, if I had to guess, the only thing that we've been kind of teased with of like, okay, something's gonna happen at this time. Yeah, gotcha. 
Well, okay. No, I, I just feel like they're, it's basically going to be kind of wrap up like this. What this next one in the like this fight, and then they're just going to kind of set it up for the next arc. Hopefully, yeah, I think it'll be basically set up kind of like a like a for the next arc, a little teaser, possibly an announcement of another season. Who knows? And then I mean, that's it's, it. It's really popular, and like it made the manga sales go crazy. So they sh- huge. Yeah, and it's, average... it's, it's shown and jump. So I figure they they want would want another season. So. The question is just how long until that second season. Well, and which animation studio too? Because I think Mappa has like so many things going on right now. Mm. If they know it's good for that, them, yeah. Mappa will continue to do it. Right, you yeah, got to prioritize your cash cows. Right. Yeah, they're not gonna yeah. let it go. Yeah, but what about you, notable guys? Oh no! Never mind. Demon Slayer. I forgot. They're busy. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, they never, Ma- they Ma- never Ma- let nothing Ma- go. <laughs> Mappa's busy too. Like we still got Chainsaw Man, and you know, technically the rest oh, of the DLT right. as yeah. well. So it's like, yeah. so I, I assume it's gonna be. It's like, like the Hero Academia model, or maybe you try to do one season every year or something. I don't know. We'll oh, see. God, uh, I hope not. It's so painful. <laughs> That is pretty painful. Honestly, if that's the case, like as much as I love the show, and I did the same thing with my hero, I think I'm just gonna oh, go. No. To this, yeah, I'm just gonna come to the source material. <laughs> God, well, you guys I, can... well, I mean, I don't see it. I don't see them have enough time because this was 26 episodes too. So I don't see them have enough time to do another 26, like in like six oh, months yeah. or anything. So no way, for sure. So I get that. Wait, did so, you get to 26? I think isn't it just yeah, 24? Two, 24. I mean, but I mean, I mean, like okay. two, two, two quarters. Oh so. right, gotcha. Mm-hmm. And it was back to back too. We didn't, they didn't take a break, so that is true. It's so good, man. I need that. It's like my <laughs> fix. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if I really have much more but, though. It's just no, kind of. Like... I didn't have much to say either. So, all right. Yeah. So honestly, be... preview for next episode is gonna be awesome. Yeah. Or wait, next episode is gonna be awesome. Yeah. According to the preview. That's all I got. So that's gonna be it for Jujutsu Kaisen, and then move on to our next show. To get to talk about Mushoku Tensei. All right. Oof. Oof. So, <laughs> dude, I like how the show. Like, it seems like almost every episode they start off with showing just like how much of like a, a beast Aries is. I don't know how strong those wolves are, but uh, she's just taking them all out by herself. Uh, I want to reiterate um, Brian's comments about the opening, like how like they just are panning out through like the different scenes, like the town. Like I really enjoy that. Like it is a really nice touch for the show, and really makes feel like you're uh... in, in an adventure, like an RPG. So yep. I really enjoy that about the show. And we got mm-hmm. a new opening for this episode. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was different. That. Yeah, it was different. Yeah. Do we think that's gonna actually? Do you think it was just like this episode, like a one a one time thing, and then you're just gonna? Go back to the. Uh, I mean, well, well, we only have one more episode. They'll probably keep more. it for it the other, the other episode as well. Gotcha. Was this episode? Is it one more or two more? I know there's a lot of episodes. episodes I thought there was a, was this episode nine or ten? I don't even... uh, this is ten. ten. We oh, my God. Okay, we have one yeah, more. Wow. One. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I guess I I'll kind of quickly start because I want to you know I I personally thought this episode was pretty mid as far as things go. <laughs> um, I know. You know, there's a lot of great buildup, and I'm sure there's great things to come. I'm being very kind of like uh, probably narrow sided as a anime only, but I felt like it was mid. So that's all I really got to say for this episode. I'll just get my my concept out of the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there there wasn't really not much going on, right, David? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my catchphrase. Yeah, in the words of dude, not, much, not really much happened in this episode. Yeah, they formed, you know, uh, an adventure group and stuff, but uh, that's cool. Well, at the oh. at the beginning of the episode, we kind of got a little bit more on uh, on um oh what's his uh I'm blanking on his name Rougier uh, Rougier yeah Rougier uh basically how they first like that like this oh they're looking for dead end and then he just casually drops like oh yeah that's me by the way and then they're just like what the f-? like we kind of got like like how it was him and then later on they kind of just revealed more as like I could easily see why he'd be considered uh, dead end it seems like he um kind of like follows his own like kind of like ideals and they like, basically breaks him and there's just no mercy yeah his moral compass is very yeah. very strict um, i will say a... though i oh, i did forget ahead. the best part of this episode for i know david really probably enjoyed it is when um rudius got to talk to god 
again. Oh, I know you oh, yeah, probably yeah. enjoyed that Dude. part, David. God, like, I don't want to see this loser. <laughs> get him on my screen. <laughs> but Rudy. Let's call it God. No, I get no, the feeling. no, Rudy. Like, the, his original Japanese, the, the yeah, fat no. fuck that's just <laughs> naked. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> easy there, Captain. No, I, I do get, I get a feeling, though, that, that, that that's eventually going to change. Like, I feel like it's we're going to be seeing Rudy at some point when he feels like he's Rudy. Cause doesn't it? Didn't they make him like a point where he just uh, he's taking like the the form of like like uh, who he thinks he is in a sense? Yeah. So that when he's talking to God, it's just how he views himself as. Yeah. He still views himself as that, as David has said, this fat piece of yeah, shit. I know. <laughs> Who's oh, naked? Yeah, it's so rude. <laughs> that watch. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, no, but no, I, but I feel like though that will change eventually. Like he's gonna have like different thoughts and like it's because it still seems like he. Every time they go back to that form, he's just like reminded about his like past life, past form, and just where we get like a little bit of a uh, bit here and there. Uh, I just have like a real kind of just quick, quick little joke. I like how easy it was for them to just cross like into the town uh, by just dyeing his hair. Oh yeah, man. I just th- I just thought like Number you know one NA, disguise and a security. <laughs> And then, uh, and then I just kind of laughed at it and just moved on. I also kind of wonder too. It's just like, oh, okay, yeah, you colored his hair, but the man still has a red jewel yeah, in the middle of his forehead, there. and I haven't seen anybody else with the big red jewel <laughs> in the middle of their forehead. Like, yeah, uh, it, it's, I, everybody. It's, there's some people every now and again, you know, it's just the green hairs, the red flag. But, but hey, throws, yeah. if I have to make this realistic. Like, think about if you were like, you know, just a, a demon monster that your job is to let people in and out of the city. Your, your job's pretty mundane. It sucks. Like, you know, you probably don't care. You're just getting Dude, your, you know, your real, weekly pay. Real for me. Exactly. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting your two, your two metal or whatever the currency is that monster using. They're just like, Oh, oh yeah, okay, well, oh, okay, yeah, come on in, like you know. But but the thing with this though, they, they they even mentioned though about how much more security there was because yep. they heard about these rumors. Oh, well, true, yeah, the dead so yeah. you think they'd be more like on alert? Well, and hey then, man, that must that must have come from the manager, the, the one that guarding the gate. They're just like, yo man, I got put on guard duty seven days yeah. this week. Shit sucks. Yeah, but when they but when they said like, oh, I, like I have an idea, I thought like, okay, they're they're gonna cover up the stone, and they didn't show his face for a while, so I thought it was gonna be some kind of crazy like dramatic thing. And they eventually showed it, like his face, and then I saw the stone. I was like, "What the fuck? What the hell did it change?" And then I forgot that it was the green hair thing until they they actually mentioned it. I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "Seriously, is this well, like the a green Superman hair?" Thing? It was it was the necklace from oh. uh, you know Roxy. <laughs> oh, yeah, <that's laughs> yeah, it's like perfect it's like, disguises. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the hair. It's was actually the necklace. They saw <laughs> yeah. that necklace and they're like, "Oh, of course you're from yeah. this tribe. Nobody else got that." Let's take the like, focus <laughs> off of this thing right in the middle of the forehead and just focus on right here. Bro, you can't mean to tell me if, if, if why can't Superman get away with the whole glasses thing, right? If you can get away with the whole glasses thing, <laughs> let my man get away with his necklace. Okay, and his hair, all right. The other part too is Rougeard himself said, "Yo, man, if you don't want me going through the gate, like I'll just fucking jump the wall." Yeah. It's like I didn't see any problem with that. I know Rudy was like, "No, nah, man, they'll freak out." Yeah. But it's like, you know, just jump the wall and yeah, then he'll I, sneak in with I, his blue hair. Like, what's the difference? I thought like I thought it'd be some sort of like like yeah ID thing or something. But no, it's just jump the I, yeah. Yeah. That was the other thing. There's like no questioning of like I. There's all demons, and then you see Rudy and Eris who are humans. Yeah, are, are yeah, humans yeah. just that regular out there sometimes? Uh, or they're just they, like we haven't seen any other no humans, humans. You know, <laughs> I guess right. They know like, they can just swat them away. <laughs> Goodbye. I mean, to be True. fair, like the, the the Roxy's village, like they do, they look like humans, just with blue hair. But like, but that, yep. to your point, like Rudy and like if they Eris, all had blue hair, they don't then. have blue hair. So like, yeah. They, Push that all either so anyways we won't get too caught up on this as there was admittedly other stuff that i i guess happened in this episode, i mean the most but... important thing was just like was the the, the whole was like uh yeah the whole morality thing with with rujard and how like i think again like this is another point for um rudy to like really set in like this is like a real world and like people do tie and like you have to be serious here that's that's like that's like my main complaint of like, rudy is like just like it's a sound. It seems like he's taking it seriously during during these moments, but then like you have him just like, uh, just like just not like uh, just reverting back basically in other moments. So like I just yeah like wait, what do you mean in other moments reverting? This this kid has never killed anyone. No, not killing anyone. But I'm he's, just saying yeah, like, like every... he's only right. seen really yeah. death once. Yeah, so don't care about death in a sense. Yeah. Eyes. Yeah, he's only seen death once, really. That it's, was with. Uh, it just seems like he doesn't take um, this world too William. seriously, and then now it's just like this second moment where like he sees someone die. So I don't know, he's like, seemed a little bit more intense at the end of the episode. I, I don't think he's not taking it seriously. I think it's just the fact that he's not accustomed to it yet, right? I guess. 
because yeah. when it comes down to it, like even in his like RL form, right? The old fat bastard. Um, he's never <laughs> okay. He wasn't that old, okay? Why are we gonna throw that in too? It was an old fat fuck. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, let's my, get it right. My bad. But technically, I'm not just, wrong either. Because I'm American. just kidding. Uh, but yeah, I mean, with the with given the fact that he was just a bomb, right? A neat back in his old days, like he's mm-hmm. never experienced anything like that in real life, right? And like even in this new world, he's only ever experienced that maybe once before up close. Uh, so he's still not accustomed to it yet. And you know, it, I don't really blame the guy for seeing someone die like right in front of you for you to be in shock like that. So it's not like he was completely frozen; he couldn't say anything. He was just like startled or shocked and he was yeah. kind of like muttering his thoughts out to uh a Richard rather than tell him just like straight up tell him not to do that anymore yeah i mean i I'm think not, he realized not... that he was in for much more than he originally bargained for like he knew yeah. you know getting right. Richard a, a good kind of rep for his people was already hard enough and now he's just like okay this guy's got a lot more deeper problems than i thought <laughs> that's what's going on yeah so. well, I mean, I mean, yeah I'm not gonna... well... at least going back to the end at least like yeah rudy does look like he's taking that like, he he understands his the how heavy the situation is because he when he like you know he was uh telling the other two ventures what to do like he had he you know had a serious look and he really does understand now like like how serious this all is so i think i hope i hope that's like a good chain good like good thing going forward for him you know? yeah all i'll say lie, though, though is our go ahead threaten i was just gonna say the bug deserved it <laughs> like, yeah, he, was, he, he was getting a little did big he for his i mean did he though <laughs> Nah. <laughs> I mean, I would be like, if I was in that bug situation, I'd do the exact same thing. I'd be pretty fucking pissed. <laughs> Some random ass fucking ten year old, how fucking roll old you Rudy is right now, ten. just pins me up against the wall with this fucking bitch ass magic. <laughs> I'd be pretty fucking pissed. Not says, no says the he did okay. get, he did get flexed on pretty hard. <laughs> if anything, though, it should have been easier on Rudy, though, because there was no blood. It was just basically a, a bug head lopped off, and then it was just laying there, you know? That's true. Yeah. They could have made it a lot more gruesome. Yeah, they could have made it more, more like, like intense as, like, what Rudy was feeling, but they I mean, they right. didn't do I don't that. think it was just his head. Like, his body uh, got cut in half. No, I, I, think think just, I think it was just the head. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, like, no guts or anything, to your yeah, point of view. Like, it could have been like, really yeah. bad of, like, gut oh, yeah. spraying, blood sprays like, on like Rudy's face, glam. and he's just like, what the hell happened? Yeah. They basically yeah. would glam, where it was just glam, basically... Like, oh, yeah, when he, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, all I can say is, like, the final two pieces that I have is, one, I hope that horse guy, that's just a complete dick, oh, gets, what, gets what he Bojack needs to get horseman. coming to yeah. him. Bojack, yeah. Bojack, Bojack, Bojack horseman, Bojack. I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, and uh, then, um, it wouldn't be... Uh, or well, before I get to this point, I, I really liked Eris standing up for Rudy in that sense awesome. and just going against Rougiard. Um yeah. That really puts you know points in her camp for me of Rudy and, and Eris getting together rather than Rudy and uh, Sylphie. Like, yeah, it's a little bit on on your point, Justin. Like she's actually mm-hmm. becoming one of my favorite characters. Like how like, at the beginning of like when she got where she was dropped into this world where she was just like terrified of like everything, and now mm-hmm. she's just so fucking hyped about everything. Like it, it's I don't know, I, I just like that. Sorry, yeah. just he's going well with the flow. No, I think that's a, yeah. a great point to add to why Eris is becoming a, a more lovable character. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and then the only other part is, you know, it wouldn't be Mushoku Tensei until we got that scene where we saw the alien or the monster's cleavage, uh, and yeah. then zoomed out to show the triple yeah. boob. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you, everybody. I, I immediately, I, I saw that. I didn't even say. I was like, okay, well, already, like, we got another uh, possible waifu. And then, and then, uh, yeah, the, I, I, I thought of um, it even the wife. It was just like, all right, here we go again. Like, when are they gonna sneak it in? Like, uh, we haven't had any, you know, perverted moments yet. And <laughs> yeah, this is like, yeah. it's just you know, full zoom yeah. cleavage, you know, and then zoom out, not just any cleavage, <laughs> but triple my, cleavage. Triple my cleavage. favorite, my favorite part of that moment was like there was like a fight breaking out, and Rudy just did not give a fuck. <laughs> like there was something oh, yeah, that was that going was on in the funny. background, and Rudy was just like, no, nah, I'm, I'm sorry, like what, what were you saying? <laughs> just like focused on that. Yeah. Um. Or I even when he just first he walked that. into the Adventurers Guild. <laughs> oh, really? Right? Like, hey, everybody. It's like, what's good? And he's got, you know, the spiked hair <laughs> and the eye patch, like typical JRPG looking oh, ass. Too. Like, <laughs> oh, we did. So. We, um, in the end, too, we did meet the three people, the three other uh, adventurers. So I wonder if they're going to show up later, if they're going to be important. Oh, at the all. Right. The Ginyu Force? Gin- yes. The Ginyu Force. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to predict <laughs> those three end up dying a brutal fucking death. I Dude, can see it so happening really already. Yeah. I feel like they're going to get looped in for that C rank quest or whatever to fight against, like, the larger monster. You think so? You don't. I, I think the. I think it's. Uh, if anything, the lizard in that. No, actually, never mind. They're taking on like the low class. 
uh low class uh, mission Never yeah mind. yeah because they're just swapping the quest so they can get the level c from the the two yeah. others surviving yeah. so i think then they're probably going to realize that rudy's going to think like hey you know we just met this other group they're pretty gung-ho like let's invite them along and then that would be fitting of like they're all just going to get fucked if rudy's just going to have another moment of just like holy shit like yeah I'm just getting people killed. <laughs> I actually like that new group, even though I, if anything of that new, like the new Ginyu Force, I think the I think Kurt would be the one that would survive, just because he looks like he looks like a character that would be like an actual kind of like a main character, when the other one's just like a giant bird. He's the one that got and, kicked by Eric, right, with the horns. Oh god, d- yeah, decimated. <laughs> like yeah, immediately. Okay. yeah, yeah, that's the same guy I'd say. Is like yeah. he he can live. He got actual yeah. like interaction with the main group physically so he, yeah, he, he, he gets you know he, he gets a check mark the other two he, they yeah. got death flags yeah he, he looks like an actual character the other one's just like a giant bird and the other guy looks like a like machap it's like just like some like rock yeah, that's I did, very I did, true I, yeah, I, did, I did think of machamp when i saw that a machamp or machoke whichever but whichever like, you yeah. prefer uh, Dude, i just hate how like the, the leader the bird guy his name is kurt like no, the, the, the main guy is Kurt, not the bird. Yeah, the bird no, no. Kurt. Oh no, no. I mean the, the main guy. Yeah, the oh, main yeah, guy. Is Kurt. Yeah. Like, how the fuck are you a demon? And you have a name. Yeah, some demon lords like my name's Bill. I mean, that's. <laughs> just like, what? Uh, I mean, Japan, man. They they, oh. they they try when they try to name their name the characters. So yes, I mean, Kurt, they did demon. Two guys. Hey, maybe we know more about his backstory. Maybe he had a human parent, and then they gave the name. Yeah, fair. Who I knows? Mean, basically, anything Hot not armor. Japanese just works for them because it's all foreign so yeah yeah i mean cool. to be fair i think in one of the pokemon games the guy's name is kurt and kurt, he makes yeah. like the pokeballs the, the, from the yeah, apricots yeah. <laughs> yep yep uh gen 2 <laughs> there we Zulia, go Zulia town from Soul uh, Poke. well there we go there we go yep. gold yep. silver baby <laughs> um <laughs> horrible so no it felt like um like at that moment like rudy took like a, things a lot more serious mm-hmm. um oh god it's uh like he took, he was like, he, were he actually coming up with the plan? He's following like what God is like, kind of like telling, like because the God is like showing him the chronic, or telling him like steps to take. Uh, I guess we still don't know if the if if he's good or bad. Like he, because he's leading him along, but we don't actually know why. I, I don't. Again, it's like I don't like seeing these gods involved in like when in like more in mortals like you know they are meddling with like the mortal world. I don't know. Just it feels yeah, it's like why I do you need, like. I don't know. It's like if you're just gonna take advice from a god, like what what's the point of like having your own choices if you just gotta follow him? So Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. But but yeah. we we I mean I heard apparently like you know there's there's that's I think that's like the the human god or the man god, so there's like other gods too. So we'll see. Yeah. Maybe they'll like be they'll be like they'll have his I guess they'll have his own reasons for for supporting Rudy and I guess like the other gods will have their own their own um situations too. Yeah, because I think we've only heard of two gods so far. Basically, the human god and then also the dragon god. We haven't heard well, of any, any of the other Didn't they mention demon god too? Or... Did they? Oh, but they probably... They, I think they, they did. Be race. There's the beast god, demon god, human, human god. You know, basically for every language. There, Everything. Like, there's a god, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. see that. Um, but no, it's... I mean, it's... It was... Uh, it was it was definitely like a lot, a lot more of an informative episode. We found a lot more of like Rujard's background and how he... He... Uh, has a short temper in a sense for uh, basically kids getting hit or like whatever he believes if basically somebody breaks that then he's just gonna come after you immediately yep yeah, yeah. Guys, they that. continue to build the world really well so oh yeah like dude, like, like, they're, like, like the I like the intro too. like I, I really like that intro man like so yeah yeah I didn't realize that we were gonna stay in this town for like basically kind of like like bring up their rep I also like how they 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 decided to use for like their clan name dead end to basically yep. make it to to kind of like diffuse like his like uh Richard's like nickname I guess in a sense yeah, for I wasn't, that I wasn't expecting him to stay in this town that long either I thought they were just gotta try book it to like the port but I guess maybe we'll have to like we'll have to um wait a little bit yeah yeah Listen, man you need money to get a boat okay yeah that too <laughs> that's true too so. but, yeah I, I mean I forgot they were kind of just taken in the head they didn't really have any ways of of uh actually prepping for being taken by that so. Which sucks because you know they're they're yeah, crazy we're loaded. All eager for a time skip, I right, but we're gonna have to <laughs> chill out just for a little bit longer. All right, we'll get there. Okay, we'll I get think there. we'll get the big we'll, battle of the rank C mission, and then we'll get a time skip. Well, actually, according to comments, we're not gonna get that many. Uh, that like we're not like the I biggest mean... time skips are already past us. So yeah, but there's only one more episode, guys. So how are they gonna end it? That's that's what I, I mean. Okay, cliffhanger! I, I, it's gonna no. be cliffhanger, guys. <laughs> I think again. I think it's mostly meant. It's meant to be a two core series. It's just a split core, yeah. so it's not 
tech. I don't see stuff like this. Like I don't see it as like end of the season. I see it's like the studio just needs a they need a break to line up the schedule. So I think it is meant to be just twenty three seasons, and the the second part episode. of the split core is supposed to be like the actual like season finale. Like I don't I don't like like yeah, yeah just judging them on, on split core like this. So yeah, yeah no, I, I, it would be worth it though. Like, oh, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but no, I'm just like I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna judge them for a split core. Yeah, but I'm, I'm assuming though, if this is next episode, with it being like, kind of like the final of the for like the split, it it should be like kind of again though. I have no idea where this is gonna go. Besides, just like, oh no, I, I assume that it's gonna be like a kill, a uh, kill quest, because it sounded like that's what they wanted. Um, no, yeah, because they are gonna take a slaying, slaying quest next. Yeah, because yeah, it's the fastest yeah. way to make money for them. Yep. Mm-hmm. I also so, kind of like how Rudy's plan as well. Basically, we're join them, but because technically they're like a higher rank, so they're just going to take their mission and they're just going to take like, give them one of their low, like low tier ones. Yep. Yeah. So I actually thought that was uh that was that was pretty awesome as well. Like yes, serious, sir. Rudy is pretty good. <laughs> so. I mean, if if they end on a death of Bojack Horseman, ten out of ten. <laughs> Yeah, right. I, would I want that, him to somehow be brought along on this quest and just get like one tap smashed, <laughs> or somehow his like his dumbass like comes in like when they're trying to do the quest. And it's like, and, and he's like, he... I got this. He's like, stand yeah. back, peasants, and then just gets swiped like <laughs> out of existence. <laughs> it was destroyed. Yeah, I would take that too. Definitely. Uh, but anyway, I, I don't think I have really anything else. Yeah. So we'll have to wait till the the last episode for this first part of the core next week. So. Yes. Uh, real quick, um, just again, just we left it to the end. But oh, we yeah. just want to thank like, everybody for like chat for the comments, also like who's listening to the podcast as well. Um, if you feel like if you're listening to the podcast, if you feel like joining us uh, live, we do do this on uh, on Twitch. Um, the day was it the Sunday of the airing date of Mushoku Tense Day. Um, but no, for for the comments for YouTube, thank you, uh, Reachon, Ronan one 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 one, Infinite, uh, Nikhil Philip, God. GGO Gaming, Summer Jazz, Amir, Christopher, Rory, Code Number Twelve, Azuriel, uh, Zeke, Great Rat. Thank you for joining us. That's a big one. And Hot Cam, nineteen ninety six. Your discussions are awesome, and keep the videos going because they're also like with uh, like non uh, spoiler as well. It's been very uh, those those gaps have been filling up pretty. Well. I feel like I actually know a lot about this show like more than any of the other shows. Yeah, this is the only important one other than Jujitsu. So. Rude. We're on to our next show. We're gonna talk about Promise Neverland, and I don't know. I feel like I say this every week, Justin. But it's like it's just a lot of what happens in this episode. Yeah, like yeah. you just feel like the pacing is so it's so off. Like it, we're we're just jumping through so many different things. So like I can see to to how Sasha's point before how he said he was enjoying the show. Like I still it's still I guess enjoy like I can still watch it, but just like it's just trying to go through everything it's like there's a lot of jumping around here that like that feels like it was just cut from like you know the manga like as an anime only viewer i can just see like things like just being cut so that's just my take yeah i'll, I'll sasha i'll let you give your breakdown because i think you did a, a good job of you know what what things you saw from a unbiased standpoint in this week's episode all right well <laughs> I mean, the show has just taken the ridiculous dial and completely ripped it off. Like it, it, none of it makes any sense anymore. Really, first of all, my boy Norman, who I love dearly, I consider him like a second son, even though I don't even have a first one. Uh, Norman is just—he is changing his mind and attitude every single week. Like he goes from genocidal maniac to, oh hey, these guys are my family back to genocidal maniac to then oh yeah i probably shouldn't do this anymore to oh hey we figured out that we can you know live peacefully with these demons let's just do that <laughs> um it just everyone's attitude changing at the drop of a dime is it's just oh man it, you can tell how this was butchered like this would have potential over time i gotta say my favorite part of the episode though was an uh, old man toothless when he's like, "Oh hey there, you know I saw this wow. boy in wait, the woods." Wait, and, uh... our man and folks like that. <laughs> yeah, the, I thought that was gonna be like Yugo or someone that like character they cut out from the Goldie Pond arc or whatever. All the manga nah, readers man. are saying, "Don't you dare do Yugo dirty like that." And <laughs> and, uh, the manga, uh, I want you to keep that man's name out of your mouth. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, 
And I love how he's just like, you know, it's the first time I respect the humans because I saw they want to live. So what did I do? I just ate his ass. <laughs> like, yeah, that part come was on, really... <laughs> He He's had like, to, man. It was for his family, all right. No, no, <laughs> yeah, it's, they it's, all see it's for their family. No, I just thought it's oh, like, man. oh, if you just saw a, you, you saw a cow that's slowly dying. You're like, well, I can't make this cow go to waste. It's just might as well make use of it. Yeah, man, uh, nobody no, wants beef jerky from an old cow. I totally agree, here. man. Like we're continuing to move at the speed of light, for lack of a better words, to get to this ending and. You know, Emma just does her thing with her talk no jutsu, like, Norman, this is bad. You don't want to do this. Like, you're a little scared child. You want to be, you know, with us. Like, don't do this. And Norman's just like, oh, oh, oh okay, uh, you're right. Um, um, I was right. wrong, even though I was Sasuke last episode, but you're right. And like, yeah, exactly as you said, he's just a flip flop. And now it's just like, you know, pandering to the will of Emma, which I think we've said time and time again, like, Emma's ideology really doesn't have much strong support to go off of, but because she's, you know, the the primary character amongst, you know, the three main ones of like, Norman, Emma, and Ray. Like, again, it's like I would, going like, to her will. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, but it's just like it's just a show. Like like basically like the whole thing for me, it's like, like she keeps trying to say like like, you know, she wants to save everyone. It's like you have to save your family first. Like you have so you're not in a position to decide to save everyone. You're so like you barely have, like you barely have enough to save like yourself. So like that's like yeah. yeah. So again, if anything, I, I, no, I, David. I what? We're all family. <laughs> Everyone's gonna survive. <laughs> Everyone can make it. Even the people that try to kill us. It's some. It's some that's heavy right. Naruto believe it moments <laughs> that are going on. But hey, at least Naruto had style. And you're like, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm just saying, like the easy, the earlier moments. It's just like believe it before you really got to see. Like, all right, Naruto can you know back up what he's dealing out and stuff. So. Emma's like, um, believe it, that all her best friends die around her. <laughs> yeah, like, Help! He's like, oh, well, oh, we'll still believe it, guys. Right? And like, yeah, everybody's dead. Like, one of the kids is torn in half. Like, guys? <laughs> and then also, uh, like, we'll still believe it. Yeah. And you're mentioning, too, like, yeah, the flip-flop of Norman. And the same thing happened with, like, the, the other people. Like, like Yeah, Barbara, I was just going to bring that like, up. All the other lambdas. Yeah, Barbara is a perfect example of, like, like her change in character makes absolutely that was no so, sense. That was like, so weird. Like, the whole... Like, like, because we didn't see anything in the show that makes it seem like she would ever forgive the demons, and she just, I guess, I guess what, just because they're kids, demon kids, she still like hesitates. But I don't know. That's just like, yeah, she well, she has like the flashback of like she's doing basically the same thing that demons were doing to her when they were torturing her in the Lambda facilities. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree. Like that is yeah. just such a weak thing to you know. Of course, when ne Norman has you know a change of heart, they all now have a change of heart, except for um the bald-headed vincent dude vincent. who's just like what are you doing we gotta kill him and then um zazi the guy with the paper bag on his head that guy's a badass in the manga so <laughs> definitely gotta go back for him because he's, be he's being done dirty is is he the same guy as the other guy who was like gray in his hair how many no. how many people are following norman four four or three Oh, there's okay, Barbara. Okay. There's a guy with the like buzzed head who has like the black and white. There's Zazi, the guy who has like the two katanas and the paper bag on his head. And then there's Vincent, who's the bald headed guy with glasses. Got it. Got it. Got See, it. Okay, has, like, I, didn't, I, didn't, mark on his head. I didn't even realize it was Vincent. That was like that was like the one that was questioning it. Like I, I thought it was like someone else. So that's why I was. Confused oh yeah, because he was ending. he was hooded and had the mask yeah, on. Yeah, that's why I was so. confused at the ending. Like wait, what, Vincent? Before, what are you doing, bro? But it makes more sense now. So. <laughs> Yeah, so we have all those issues, and then, yes, you know, we have the old man who adds his good antics to a nonsensical in its own regard, where, you know, it just so happens that the one human that he finds dying has, you know, the piece of this pen that also happens to have all of the maps, the guard patrols, and, you know, don't forget, this pen he found was, like, years ago, so you're <laughs> telling me that, ago, like, yeah. the maps haven't changed, the guards haven't changed, and then the icing on top of the cake is, oh, remember what Norman and all the Lambda people are dying to? Well, there's a <laughs> cure for that as well, so, yeah. hey, we, we got it, like... <laughs> I'm assuming, um, oh, that's man. A, the human he found, I'm assuming that was, like, Minerva, or something? Mm. I can't remember whether okay. I, I don't think it is, okay. um, but I, maybe I'm I, misremembering. But yeah, it's just very convenient. If anything, I think it was a, a follower of okay. Minerva. Something like that then. But I can't I can't honestly remember. Um, and then the only other thing was we did get to see. Um, oh, man, Sasha, what do you call Peter Ratchery? You remember what his nickname was that you gave him last week when I told you his name? And then you were just like, I'm gonna call him this. 
care oh, about. Oh gosh. I, I Anyways, can't remember doesn't, either. Doesn't matter. You have the scene with Peter Atri, Isabella, and the demons where they're all saying, okay, you know, we know they have the radio and we're just going to tell them that all of the Grace Field, you know, kids are getting shipped out tomorrow. Um, I feel like, again, like that doesn't really add anything in terms of, yes, it progresses the plot of like, you know, why they get brought back to Grace Field now. And then, um, I don't know. I feel like they just did Isabella so dirty this season of like, you see her the one time where, you know, she's making the deal with Peter and them. And then now you see the second part where I guess this kind of ties into this deal, but it just has no weight to it. It's like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, it's, uh, so I'm, I'm going to hearken to, um, attack on Titan as a reference point. And obviously that's, that's a big thing. Cause I, th- I think the first season of the promise Neverland holds up to, uh, Attack on Titan pretty well, actually. But this this season, obviously, is a whole different story. However, what I wanted to say was, it, let's take a look at, for example, Gabby's character. Gabby's character in Attack on Titan, right? We're going to see her probably, most likely, this is my prediction, I have not read the manga, change. I think she's someone who's starting to see the weight of her actions, the weight of her country's actions, the whole ideology behind being a Marleyan, but still being an Eldian and, you know, going to war for them, killing her own people in, in a sense. You can see how over the course of this entire season, she is potentially going to change. And that development came through multiple instances where she's interacting with other characters, where she's seen something, where she's acted in a certain way that's affected the lives of others. And we get absolutely none of that with any character that is supposed to change their ways in this show. Like Norman was the perfect example. Um, It's just, and then their whole crew, you guys mentioned Barbara and, you know, whatever X head and paper bag boy. Like I get it. And you pointed to this earlier, Justin, like they joined it because Norman changed his mind. And obviously one person has not changed their mind because he's selling them out, but it's, it's just, it's, it feels cheap. Like everything has basically been a giant thud since episode four or five. I can't remember which one. And that's that's the problem, because every time I watch the show, I think of what could have been if the show was given another season or if the show was given a few more episodes or, you know, if like you just mentioned, Isabella, who is a very intriguing character to me, even though I love Norman and I love the crew from season one, I really liked her as a villain. I thought she was the main selling point to the show, in all honesty, like as a villain. And then you find out the big twist that even brought more to it. And then this season, we've had like two scenes of her, and that's it. And you think someone as smart as her, who's raised these kids, who has, you know, gone one on one with them from a mental standpoint, you think they'd have more to offer regarding her character. But it's like, oh no, she's in a prison cell. She talks to a grandma, she talks to demons, and then she talks to Professor Rat, whatever his name is. Okay, like. That, yeah. That's it? Really? So now we're building up to this grand finale in which I have a feeling she might go kaput. I'm not sure. Or she might even try to save them because obviously she's tied to Ray. I think she has some very deep feelings for these children. And she's like, she's going to hate what's his face. Uh, Rat Patrol. I think that guy is going down the gutter too. I think they're both going to yeah. die. But it's just this weird... I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to express it, but it's it's what could have been. And, uh, yeah. It's, no, I no, think, I, I think I, you I hit the nail on the head. So I think it's it's exactly that where in the source material, you know, the arcs that they cut and everything like that is exactly what was some of the, you know, other peaks of the series for individuals. Because one, it's not only building, you know, Emma, Ray, Norman and all the characters that you've come to know from Grace Fieldhouse. Uh, but it's also introducing some other really great characters apart from, you know, the ones that we did see from Lambda. Um, but it really builds the world out much more of really understanding like the promise, the reason that, you know, you have humans versus demons and everything. And it goes so much more in depth into that, where even though I think admittedly, even in the manga, you know, things kind of happen similarly with Isabella, like what we've seen so far. But like you said, because as an anime only, you haven't gotten to, you know, get any of those other arcs, those other great characters, those other world building moments of why the world is like this way, the interactions between humans and demons that, you know, is being left out. It it really is, you know, selling a lot of things short and, you know, not painting a great payoff of, you know, why things are being done this way. But I will say, 
Um, I don't think they're going to do Isabella the best justice, if I had to guess, because we only have, you know, so many episodes left. But in yep. the manga, she admittedly does get her her great payoff. Um, and I'll leave that mm. open for interpretation of whatever you think that form should look like. But it definitely is there in the manga. So it'll be like 30 seconds long in the anime watch. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm fearing. So <laughs> it probably is. And it's not going to have that that, you know, emotional or heavy weight to it as it would when, you know, you have all these other arcs that kind of span out to then get to this payoff. So, so you, yeah, uh, I, I think. Uh, go ahead, David. I was going to say, like, I'm the type of person like I always want, like, I always appreciate the original source. So when I see things get adapted, I always want them to be like as close to the original source as possible. So I'm so I'm always biased on that. And I can see why, like, sometimes you may want to change things a little bit, but. I'm always like just I'm a respect the original source type of person, so I don't like it when things like this change so much. So that's just yeah, it definitely you know it it didn't work out at all for lack of a better word. Like the response and the feedback and the ratings speak for themselves. Like, so the only like I've only heard like Jujutsu Kaisen like anime was better than the manga, but it's, it's just such a rare case that like I so I'm always weary when they try to. They think they can like change, make make the adaptation better than the original. Yeah, I mean it's, it's something that yeah. nobody saw coming until you know that fourth or fifth episode when it really kind of dropped the ball of like, all right, we're not in the promised Neverland anymore. Like, what is? Where are we? So we're in the SWAT team land. Yeah, it's a good place to yes. go. Yeah, so, it's yeah. it's really unfortunate. It's it's it is. Yeah, but but like it, I could it say, is. Hopefully this has left such a bad taste in people's mouth that it doesn't, you know, make you think that the series as a whole is bad. It's just that recognize there is a source material out there and the source material, while it does have, you know, its own fair criticisms, you're getting a complete different story that you I think hope, everybody needs to but get a chance. Like, there's so much like, anime only people are like, most people just got to write it off. It's just like, they're not just I know. Think about the the manga, really so. I, I genuinely hope we get a documentary down the road and we probably won't. <laughs> which is why I generally hope we do that uh, explains like behind the scenes what's happened because we have yeah. zero idea. I mean, right? yeah, I, I, I kind of wonder and sorry to cut you off. Sasha is like for you guys, if you know, you didn't have someone like myself who had read the manga, do you think like, you know, you would have watched the anime till the end and then you would have gone back to like the different um, Reddit threads and then you would have seen like, oh, they did this dirty, and then you still would have decided to read the source material? Or yeah. if all you knew was this anime original, would you just be like, oh, I'm done with it? Like, No, because I, I, I loved the first season, so I would have like, went to check to see what happened. Like, mm -hmm. Do you think you would have done the same, though, Sasha? Yeah, because you know when you respect and admire something so much, you, you want to give it a chance, because you're like, all right, maybe this is a rough arc, or this is just a rough period. Like, One Piece, with its you know pace and sometimes not so great arcs it's still worth it in the long run because you know it's going to pay you back at the end of the day and with promised neverland the first season was phenomenal i think i gave it a nine out of ten i just thought it was really great um so i would go back and check out now if i had heard the manga was also the you know whether it was the same or not but if i had heard the manga was terrible then i'd probably tune out and be like all right whatever i'm gonna watch the anime and wash my hands clean of this show yeah. um but i did actually the way I was introduced to the show was as I was watching Demon Slayer, I was reading the first volume of the manga and I thought it was really well done. And then I watched the anime and then I stopped reading the manga from there because I'm like, OK, I want this to be an anime only experience. Interesting. And now it's a uh, it's, it's come full circle because, you know, yep. we're going back to the manga. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But no, I got nothing else to say. I just wanted to see kind of your guys' perspective because as David said, you know, I'm sure for some people as anime onlys, if they aren't really as in tune with checking, you know, threads and other feedback, they very well are probably just like, like eh, that show like, was mid. I'm done with it. Yeah, like like the <laughs> anime sucks. world, it's still very fragmented. So it's like you don't, it's just, yeah, it's basically it, 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 like stuff like this, like people, most people won't know because they're not going to bother check. And then also like yep. uh, Sasha was asking about like the documentary thing. It's like, do like stuff like this is like it's just like when you do something documents like this, it's just gotta paint someone in a bad light, and that's just just, just not like a thing you want to do in the anime industry because it's still it's so small and like tightly connected, and no one wants like no one wants to burn any bridges. So I can't ever see like anything like that ever coming out. We we need that. 
We, we do, kind of but period. I just can't see it. Burn the, the bridges. Way. Burn everything. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, I would like, that, like, let's say 10 years down the road when most people are, not 10 years, but whatever, however long it takes for some of those guys to retire, or get assassinated, whatever it might be, just to <laughs> release a documentary that says, hey, listen, the studio was pressuring the artist, the artist was doing this, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, for whatever reason. But, you know, as fans, just like, for example, George R. R. Martin in writing the books, how there's this debate, right? Like, should he have the right or should not should he have um the responsibility to come out the books as soon as possible and finish the series because that's what's made him famous right so should we as fans who have invested our time our money and our emotions at the series have the right to know like hey what's what's going on here and for me i, I think for this show it, it would justify the fact that we had this just train wreck of a season however i will say this i do think this anime original plot could have worked potentially given if the show had let's say 24 episodes to work with then i could have seen this actually working out to some degree but as it stands right now it was just horribly butchered because of the pacing and the fact that it had 11 episodes which i think is one or two more less than the first season which also makes no sense so i would have really loved to give this thing even if it was anime only or uh, sorry anime original but 11 episodes is not going to do anybody any favors. I totally agree. I got nothing else to add. Yep. Still really good OP though. You know me, I'm not a good OP guy, but I love that OP. Holla holla for $10. Yo man, you love that OP, but then when I told you that OP was changing when they were adding extra characters in as the story developed, you were like, yo man, I didn't even notice that. So, Dude, so I've been dirty, watching man. One Piece for a while. I just watched the full OP and I was like, this song's not that bad. And this OP is pretty cool. <laughs> so man. that's all i gotta say but hey man i'm always glad when you're picking up more jams from from the anime you watch so <laughs> same that's how we roll well listen good all right thanks i think we'll leave it there so <laughs> we're in it there for promise Slam land we're in it here for the podcast I want to thank the audience for joining me this week thanks guys shout out to ulysses glad you could show and join us this week always appreciate your comments as well yeah sorry yes. no, no, no alt this week but we'll definitely look forward to that next week yeah, for everybody else who joined us in chat too, uh, uh, it was a, a Ulysses, uh, Darren. Thank you guys for joining. Tizzle, Andy, thank you as well. Um, and then also, uh, thanks. To Ye- I think Yehu, Yehu, no, thank Yehu, you uh, again for um, kind of talking uh, talking through uh, the Razor Zero part. Am I missing? Any? Oh, and Tommy, thank you as yeah. well for jumping in there. Yeah. And then yeah. so yeah, so thanks guys for joining the chat, and then thank I want to thank uh, my panel for joining me. Thanks guys, always a lot of fun. Well, no problem, man. Well, fun discussions this week. And we're getting that, to the end of the season. It's getting yep. close. We're almost there. Yeah, just a couple more weeks left. And that's going to be for this week. We'll join you next time. Bye. 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 Ulysses, if you have to leave, uh, I'm not sure how long you're staying, but you know, thank you again for joining us. Yeah. And oh, good, man, luck on, good luck on everything. Yep, he's in Twitch chat with us. Jaegerista for life, bro. <laughs> bro, I hope he's still Yo, here. Classy. If you're around, man, we should go to a beach, take our shirts off, and just steal people's jackets and just scream, Jaegerista for life. <laughs> all right, Classy. Oh, That's all I got to say. <laughs> again, I don't expect this to be too long, so we'll just wrap this up Dude, real this quick. At least three hours long. Yes. <laughs> there is so much context what, and what substance in this episode. Oh, you don't even know that. Oh, you don't know, Brian. Actually, catch up or what? This stuff, <laughs> Dude, I, a show of this caliber only comes across, you know. Dang, did it really like turn 180 like that? Holy yeah, shit. Dude, hell yeah. Let's, let's just say this. Like, the manga is pretty garbage. I read it. And now this, this is way better. Anime original <laughs> is the... Damn, for Ooh, real? I'm, I'm just tuning in. Is, is this all Bro. sarcasm or what's happening here? <laughs> no, it actually no. got really good when we were talking about how the <laughs> author, you know, what with the script reader, like their <laughs> things now. Like, look at the latest rating. The the manga Dude. fans are loving the show again. They're yeah, full, no you know, no joys and yeah. 
Listen, the manga, I gotta say, I can see why the ending got shit on because the route they took, wow. The I gotta well, say, the anime has definitely it's much better. Sure, I mean it, you know. So anime for life. <laughs> She's out of here. <laughs> anime out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just see Justin here, you... put out a hood. Yeah. He evil. Right. He was <laughs> Dude, you guys are uh, fucked up. Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Up, see, man. He's the root of all my <laughs> evil. <laughs> Brian, how dare you, man? Your acting what? was good, though. Yeah, so, sorry, Brian. Uh, don't watch the show. It's a big shot. Yeah, <laughs> that was right I caught the sarcasm. Yeah, he got yeah. the hard yeah. sarcasm. Yeah. Yeah. sarcasm. Yeah, so I, will, I will need you to tell Taylor later. Yeah, I'm t- fear I'm that she is going to I'm, now. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> she I was like, that she understood yeah, me and me and Sasha well, heavy she, sarcasm she, at that point. Yeah, but she just sent a message maybe, saying, Ooh, I think I deafened just in time. I was like, Yeah, I was like, Yeah, they were kidding. <laughs> she just sent me another, then she just sent me another message. God, motherfucking damn it. <laughs> Man, we're gonna be one of the disappeared folks, Sasha. We're just gonna show missing one week. You yeah, we're all a bunch it. of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was about to say, if you guys was, don't see me it tomorrow, it was all Sasha's plan. Once he started going, I, I, you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't not support him. True. Mm-hmm. Listen, I just, oh man, Taylor, well, I just, I just got a new trench coat at the beach, and Justin gave it to me. And I just nodded to him, and uh, we're gonna yeah, go party. Man, you're gonna make me your flock to your errand? <laughs> Fuck, dude, that's, that's uh, yeah. fucked up. <laughs> All right, as you all know, Dave me and Sasha could, could go all night. Yep. Uh, yep. Cool. That that can be taken in many contexts. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Sensical. Yes. Let's go. Sensical, pleasurable. <laughs> Wait. Whoa. Whoa. What, what was? Okay. Never mind. We're getting off topic. Let's please. Let's refocus ourselves. <laughs> 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 